Good morning, everyone. I would like to call to order the Pasco Board of County Commissioner meeting of January 22nd, 2019. I would like at this time for everyone to silence their electronic devices. And at this time, I'd like for you to stand for the invocation and pledge. Oh, merciful creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? District 2, Commissioner Moore. Here. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Here. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Here. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Here. District 1, Chairman Oakley. Here. I didn't get one. At this time, it is time for public comment. Citizens are given an opportunity to comment on any item coming before the board uh, through public comment section. And the board is also takes public comment on items to be placed on the future board agenda for their business under their preview. Uh, public comment for the public hearings items will be given <coughs> at 1.30 this afternoon. Individuals speaking during public comment will be given three minutes to speak. After stating your name and address for the clerk, the timer will sound and the uh, podium will start a countdown. After two minutes, one beep will sound and the light will change from green to yellow, letting know that there is two, one minute left after the timer is uh, up. Two beeps will sound. The light on the timer will change from yellow to red, indicating three minutes are up and should close your comments. The following people have signed up. We have signed up. Yes. Uh, Donna, is it Harrier? If you could please state your name and address for the record. Bear with me, I've had an ear infection since Christmas that I can't hear too well with. Uh, my name is Donna Herrick, 15401 Cary Lane, Hudson, Florida. Uh, I just would like to know what's going on in Pasco County. We have rules, we have regulations, and it seems like everybody has to follow them except one person. Um, there's supposed to be a permit given for every building that's built. We've got businesses that have been put in within the last 10 years, never got a permit, but they still run the business. Nothing's ever done. The least little infraction that anybody else has, like my neighbor had a party on Sunday afternoon, there was few beer cans in the backyard that cannot be seen unless you're in his yard or in the back end of our yard. Uh, but by Monday afternoon, the cops were sitting at his gate waiting for him to come home from work. Um, if we don't cut our grass on time, we have code enforcement. Code enforcement has been has told me that they can't do anything that's uh, unless they see someone breaking the rules. I call at 3 o'clock to let them know that what's going on. Um, nobody ever shows up. This guy had a hole that is an eyesore and a hazard to anyone living around there that was supposed to be filled in by November, or he was gonna to go to jail. It still isn't filled in. He's cut down about 45 to 55 trees across the road from us. There's plenty of debris and sand and junk piled up five feet high that could be in that hole. But if we tried to sell our property right now, we would get maybe half of what we paid for, because it is a total mess. It looks like a dump. And from Little Road, it's 
it looks even worse. Um, and Little Road, I think, is used, I haven't seen a cop out there for five months, except when there's an accident. <clears throat> um, I think it's used for practice ground for, in the, for the Indy 500, because I thought I was daydreaming one day because a car passed me like I was sitting still. I was doing 55, and it's a 45 mile an hour zone. And uh, thank you for your comments. No, nope. your time's up. Nobody ever shows up. Okay. There's nine monuments between 52 and and New York and Bolton Road. Okay. M we'll have somebody check. From yes. That. Thank you. Uh, the next individual signed up is Dan Callaghan. <laughs> Dan Callahan, 7108 Daggett Terrace, Newport Ritchie. I regret not seeing any of the county commissioners or officials at yesterday's celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, hosted by the African American Club of Pasco County. Over these many years, the only person I've seen at that January event has been Commissioner Jack Mariano, and I'm grateful for that. If it's other than a lack of interest or concern for people of color, and citizens who care about diversity, please let me know, and I'll, I'll ensure that you receive a personal invitation for next year. Today, in the first month of 2019, I'm not going to belabor you <clears throat> with why you'll never succeed in pushing through either phase one of the Ridge Road extension or the unmentionable phase two from the Suncoast Highway to Route 41 that some business entity is magically going to pick up the half billion dollar tab for. I'm not going to mention that by your inaction as well as your misguided actions, you seem to have angered and made enemies among Lenore, development lead leaders, as well as the Bexley family with its 7,000 vital acres. Perhaps there are secret plans to mend those fences after the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers issues you their phantom permit that's eluded you since 1998. I understand it's all hush hush and it probably involves millions of dollars that does affect Pasco County citizens. But after wasting about $19 million on the four-lane highway this night through the Saranova Starkey lands, what's a little bit more money? No, rather than doing that, I'd like to read to you a few quotations written by some of our most famous naturalists. There's a message here regarding the true value of the Saranova wilderness and why the SOS coalition, the Save Our Saranova Coalition is not going away, it's not giving in, it's not backing down, and it's not giving up. John Muir said, in every walk with nature, one receives far more than is sought. He also said, the gross heathenism of civilization has generally destroyed nature and poetry and all that is spiritual. Joseph Wood Crutch wrote, if people destroy something irreplaceable made by mankind, they are called vandals. If they destroy something irreplaceable made by God, they are called developers. Henry Thoreau said, an early morning hike is a blessing for the whole day. He also said, in wilderness is the preservation of the world. John Burroughs from the Catskills said, I go to nature to be soothed and healed and to have my senses put in order. Thank you. Next. Next person signed up is Patricia Higgins. Ms. Higgins, please state your name and address for the record, please. Good morning. My name is Patricia Higgins. I live at 15400 Bermondsey Street. Hudson, um, same old thing, Vermonzi Street, race place of the nation. We've got cars racing, it's 30 miles an hour. That sign has been covered for two years by palm fronds. They couldn't see it if they wanted to, but they dev evidently don't want to. The other night, if there had been one of our pets out, or even me walking across the street, I wouldn't be here today. I'm telling you, I don't know how they stopped at Bolton Avenue. That's how fast they were going. 
Why can't we get the police to come to Bermondsey Street? Why can't they come and patrol it once in a while? There's drug dealing. There's a meth lab two houses down from us. The other night we came home. I don't, can't really swear that that's what it was because I don't deal with that stuff. But there was an odor that burnt my throat. And other neighbors that do know what it is have told me that they could smell it in their house. The windows are all boarded up. That's against the law. That's been three years. We've called the police. Nothing is done. Nobody shows up. And when they do, they park in the middle of the street with their air conditioners going. I can hear it in my living room. You mean those people out there that are driving four-wheelers, unlicensed vehicles down the street? Why are they going to do it when there's a cop sitting right there where they can see it? Our police force is a joke. They do nothing. I wonder what they get paid for other than going to Dunkin' Donuts. It's really a shame. I've lived there between where Mrs. Herrick lives and my place for almost 18 years. And the same stuff is going on today that was 18 years ago. And no help. The elderly people are being pushed to the wall. What's it going to take? Somebody getting killed there before you wake up and do something to help us? We're just asking for your help. Thank you. Thank you. The next um, speaker is William Fuller. Mr. Fuller, please state your name and address for the record, please. My name is William Fuller, 15400 Bermondsey Street, Hudson, Florida. The reason I'm here is that we had trouble with our roads quite a while. It's been going on. We had first off in Lime Rock, they put liquid asphalt down. It got full of, full of potholes, and they, you could lose the front end of your car in them. And they went back and they passed it about a month and a half, two months ago, and very full of potholes again. When is something going to be done to fix that road permanent? You got all these money you're going to spend on these new roads. Why can't they fix the old roads? Repair them where it's supposed to be, where it's passable. I mean, you got millions of dollars going on, to, say, the Ridge Road Extension proposal or whatever. Why well, can't you take some of that money, put it on the roads that need to repair and fix them? Thank you. Um, what road did you say? What's your issue? Bermondsey. Right on Bermondsey. Same place we're having a meth house, but on the roads. Same place you got the drug dealing going up and down the roads, speeders on the roads. I mean, there's all kinds of problems. Right. You call the police, nobody comes around. Call the state troopers, they don't come around. Yeah. You can't get no help from nobody. I guess we're going to have to go back to the old system of redneck justice. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker that's signed up is Diane Kobernut. Kobernick. Kobernick, sorry. Good morning, again. My name is Diane Kobernick. I live at 5001 South Shore, Newport Ritchie, and I'm a member of Gulf Harbors United. Commissioners. Today I would like to refresh your memory on Chapter 100, Section 102.2 of PASCO's Land and Development Code. The provision of this code shall be construed and implemented to achieve the following intentions and purposes of the Board of County Commissioners. You guys. To establish the regulations, procedures, and standards for review and approval of all purpose development in the county to foster, preserve public health, safety, welfare, and to aid in the harmonious, orderly, and progressive development of the county in accordance with the adopted comprehensive plan. To implement development review process, and that's just to name a few. I have now met with many of your staff, and I keep hearing, Pasco County has no written policies and procedures on so many issues. Pasco County just has guidelines, and they don't even have to follow those. The lack of consistency is very apparent in code violations department. Last September, I tried to send you a letter regarding this inconsistency. Pasco actually has ordinances to deal with the code violations. However, our own community had to send your department heads the ordinance numbers and information to get stuff accomplished. The field officers 
There we are aware of how that the higher, that without higher authorization, nothing could be done. Of course, it does not help when some commissioners ask to ignore the same violations. If you want more information on that, you should actually read my September 23, 2018 letter and pack it in its entirety. In addition, I have met with your constituents on judging on the anger and frustration and the fact that some have gone so far as to use their own money to sue Pasco County, it would appear that many of your decisions have not been so harmonious. Thank you. Right, thank you. The last speaker that I have signed up is Mitchell Kobernick. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mitchell Kobernick, 5001 South Shore in Gulf Harbors. Pasco County is trying to rebrand itself as a more desirable destination for tourists, new residents, and new businesses. The goal is to show that Pasco County has grown up. But public relations campaigns cannot counter Pasco's long-standing reputation that it is run like the Wild West. That perception can only be changed when Pasco starts to actually act like a grown-up. Mature governments need to have rules that employees must follow if they want to give those new residents and businesses comfort that they could know what to expect from government. Without such a firm set of policies, the door is wide open to abuse and influence by outside forces and special interests. PASCO has some good staff. I've met some of them. And they deserve to be able to do their jobs without undue influence. I have personally come across this lack of policies in the county's purchase of real estate. A public records request for the county's written policies and procedures <coughs> was answered that there were no such policies. Only a single document was returned, the ELAMP standard operating procedures. This was well written and sets out some very specific requirements for ELAMP to follow, but the county has taken the position that they don't have to follow it. In the case of ELAMP's attempt to purchase the Gulf Harbors golf course, I believe that ELAMP was given direction from above to disregard their policy to get that purchase done. ELAMP sent ballots by certified mail for the homeowners to vote on whether to create an MSBU to tax them for that purchase. But when the results of the vote were questioned in Diane's lawsuit, the county took the position that the vote was not binding on the county. The county attorney even went so far as to state that the commissioners could overrule a negative vote and pass the MSBU regardless of how the people voted. Are these the actions of a county that wants to be taken seriously? And there are other examples. When the county purchased the Magnolia Valley and Timber Oaks golf courses, there were no environmental studies done on the land prior to purchase. I'm in real estate, and I have never heard of any responsible buyer not conducting a soil test prior to purchase, let alone on golf courses, which are well known to contain pesticides and herbicides. For Timber Oaks, the county had to develop a soil management plan to deal with the con contamination they found after they already owned it. For Magnolia Valley, I've seen documents that seem to suggest that the former county administrator deliberately chose to deny a staff request to do an environmental study before the purchase. These are the sort of capricious actions that only bolster the perception of PASCO as a place where, if you are well-connected, you can get things done. Only with a set of written policies and procedures that give staff certainty as to what is expected of them can we start to change the perception that in Pasco County, the result you get depends on who is doing the asking. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Time's up. Thank you. We don't have anyone else signed up this time. Someone wants to speak, come forward, Good state morning. your name and address for the clerk. Good morning, commissioners. <clears throat> Kelly Miller, 5020 McCaslin Drive, uh, Newport Ritchie, 34652. I just wanted to remind everybody that today is the point in time count for the Homeless Coalition. Um, if you are interested in volunteering or if anybody at home is watching this, please, we do still need some volunteers asking you to contact 727-842-8605. The point in time count is uh, going on until 10 o'clock tonight, and this will help us get some funding for some needed <coughs> programs. So thank you all very much. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else that would like to speak at public comment? Come forward. State your name and address for the clerk. 
Hi, my name is Linda Bell Harrell. I am CEO of the Florida Sustainable Agriculture Cooperative, Inc. Our headquarters are at 6802 Ridge Road in Fort Ritchie. Uh, I would like to uh, give our support to the Florida Farm Bill that we have put, uh, given each and every one of you and be open here to have any questions asked about it. We hope to be able to bring jobs galore to Pasco and to all of Florida. Okay. Are there any questions? We generally don't do questions. We don't have questions during public comment. Okay. Um, we're, we're trying to bring jobs uh, to Pasco County uh, for the farmers. Uh, the farmers will go ahead and grow sustainable agriculture, which will be canaf, which is a type of hibiscus, uh, and bamboo, and hemp. And from these products, we will be made, able to make everything from flooring, through desks, through uh, d uh, plastic that actually dissolves and our fishes will like to eat. So I'd just like to say. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your comments. My Is there pleasure. anyone else who'd like to speak? Oh. Come forward. I got a gentleman coming from the back. Please line up because we don't have anybody's name. So go ahead and line up those who want to speak. Please state your name and address for the clerk. Thank you. My name is David Pearl, and my address is 11465 Baitola Drive. I have some property on 54, and I expect to build a, put a building on there. But I need, some, I need to put an electronic sign. That would help my business. And in the areas, in the city limits, you can see electronic signs one by one there. I mean, many signs are, are being put up at uh, the city limits, but I, couldn't, I can't understand why the county refuses to put, put up electronic signs. It's just going to help the businesses to advance their businesses. So I sent out a letter to each of the county commissioners. I hope you got that. I referenced allowing us to put up electronic sign. We have a workshop scheduled in the next few months to discuss it. Well, the, the thing is this. I needed to put that electronic sign as soon as possible. And if I can't put it up, then I'll have to sell my property and go someplace else. At this time, there's no ordinance that will allow you again, to do sir? that. Say it again, sir. I said, at this time, there's not an ordinance that would allow you to put that kind of sign up I until after that. we vote That's, one in. But you can see the city limits. Uh, out in, into the city limits, you've got so many signs up there. Right. And, and, they, and uh, Pasco County refused to put the signs. Yes, sir. I, We're going to have a workshop in the near future on that, that well, specific issue. I'll just have to sell my property. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Please state your name and address for the clerk. Good morning. My name is Peter Bruchinski. I'm the president of Farmer Works. We're at uh, 2346 Success Drive in Odessa County in the Tri-County Business Park. So good morning. In Odessa County in Pasco County. What did I say? You, did you say Odessa County? I don't think. Did I? Yeah. I think you did. <laughs> you did. Okay. But we know what you mean. We know what you mean. As long as you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you're in the right I place. Understand, uh, I understand on the agenda today is going to be uh, possibly some discussions about the AMSkill apprenticeship program. And uh, not sure if everybody here is aware of it, but uh, it is a program that integrates industry with the educational system in uh, teaching a lot of the, uh, the necessary practical skills that's missing from the educational system. So we're huge advocates of that. We've been very involved with it. And I uh, just want to just take a moment just to speak about what we're seeing from it. So it's a long-term investment. 
where um, we're just seeing a tremendous um, uh, workforce um, gains, basically. Our biggest problem in growth is, uh, is, the, is the staff that we don't have, and that's a national issue. I'm involved in uh, some national manufacturing associations, and they all have the same problem, just uh, finding talent. You hear a lot of discussions these days about apprenticeships, and uh, we are actually <coughs> in Pasco County here. We are in the forefront around the nation with this program that we have. Um, it is getting attention because we are starting to really see results from it. Um, we, um, uh, we have, uh, our company is growing, we actually over about 50% increase uh, this, in this last year over previous years. We're in the process of expanding both of the buildings that we own in the West Pasco Industrial Park. And uh, still we need to find the staff and, uh, but we're also looking to use our company as an example because the students that we've had and the workforce that we're actually growing ourselves rather than, um, you know, waiting for them to show up is really, it's something that we're looking forward to demonstrating as uh, the success and attributed to the AMP Skills program. So it's, um, um, and I, I really see this also as a, uh, it's a, it's a national model that we can really um, brag about and really be proud about as a actually as a uh, economic development draw because we're doing something here that uh, is just not being done. So a lot of other areas of the country they're they're complaining about it, but we're actually doing something about it. And uh, I invite you all to come actually see what we're doing. And um, the students that we have are just uh, um, you know it, it's it's incredible what. Uh, what they're capable of doing. One student's actually now, he, uh, he had, his parents actually showed up because they had, uh, um, got eight seconds left, changed the, changed the direction of this kid's life. Parents were exactly, absolutely grateful. Moving on to engineering now, and we're paying for his college tuition as well. So I okay. just want to share that. Is Thank that you. your UCF student? UCF, that's yeah. a good school. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> Thank you. That's a good <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Anyone else to speak at the public hearing? If not, the public hearing will be closed. At this time, we'll move on to the consent agenda. And I have the following items pulled. C1, to withdraw. C32, withdraw. C29, pull and revise. C42, withdraw. C11, withdraw. Uh, I got C25, is that for discussion? Or I don't have it marked on discussion, on C25. Okay, well, those, uh, with those items we have to go over, do I have an, uh, entertain a motion for mm -hmm. the rest of the items? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. Motion passed. All right, we'll start with um, C29. Good morning, Commission. Good morning. Bramford Adumwa, Public Works Director. Uh, commissioners, we are pulling C29 for the following reasons. Um, up to this point, we have still not received the, um, <clears throat> the bond document sign agreements and also the uh, insurance certificates from the contractor, uh, Biomass. Uh, secondly, uh, we are uh, amending to show that the MSBU has been um, approved. So with that, I'd like to go through and read the recommended board action. Uh, it's, okay. it's a long thing, so I'm going to go through. Approve the award of bid number IFB-ML-19-019 to Biomass Tech, Inc., Biomass, for the plantation palms ditch restoration for the total amount of $3,631,835.00. Seven cents, excuse me. Contingent upon the receipt and approval by the purchasing and the county attorney's office of the signed agreement, payment and performance bonds, and certificates of insurance from Biomass within three business days from the date of BCC approval of the agenda memor memorandum. Now, the next sentence is that where the revision is. Should Biomass not comply with this? Time frame authorize the award of the bid to XGD Systems LLC for three million six hundred thirty-one eight hundred thirty-five zero cent dollars. 
agreement contingent, contingent upon the receipt and approval by purchasing and the county attorney's office of the signed agreement, payment and performance bonds, and certificates of insurance from SGD systems. Further authorize the chairman to execute the two originals of the final agreement provided and direct the board records division to distribute asset forth under the distribution section below. Approved budget amendment journal number 767, 762, 763, and 764 for plantation palms ditch restoration in the amount of $1,695,276. Dollars, million dollars. Move for approval. As revised. Second. Second. I got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Okay. Motion passed. Thank you. Now we'll move on to um, item C25. Uh, Commissioner Wells. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> because of the high demand of the sports facilities in this county, I was interested in reviewing um, the way we got to staff's recommendation on this item. Don't know if any of you have looked at it. Um, so with, with that, I do have some concerns. Um, the purchasing department's instructions <clears throat> to the evaluation committee included that the principal purpose of the evaluation process is to provide a sound basis to make an informed and reasonable selection of the most qualified firm by among other procedures. Um, one thing, presenting a clear picture of the issues considered during the evaluation, listing the strengths and weaknesses of each proposal clearly on the evaluation score sheet, providing proper documentation on the evaluation score sheets regarding those firms that were not listed, that were not shortlisted versus those that were recommended for potential award, and explaining in the comments section of the scoring sheet any changes in individuals own scoring made as a result of comments by other committee members. I did not find this level of detail in my review, and so it is difficult for me to accept staff's recommendations. So I would like to move that all proposals be rejected and that the project be resolicited and uh, the evaluation process be more thoroughly documented as outlined in the purchasing department's instructions. Second. I got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Wait, 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 discussion? Okay. I need to so hear. So this project, we're on a timeline for this project. I've got citizens waiting for this project to happen out in that area. I mean, we worked hard on this. I, I need, I want to hear from staff first before, okay. you know, to respond. Good morning, Stacy Ziegler, purchasing director. I just respond to the, I guess the comments are. I, we follow the process that we have been following for the last six months since we updated our uh, purchasing manual. Um, we definitely feel that we all rules were, there were no actual comments that were written down uh, specific to the evaluation committee uh, members actually putting down their comments. But if you listen to the tape, uh, they did have full discussion. Um, we we feel like we've done our due diligence and that our recommendation should stand. Yeah. Let me, if I, I can. I, I, so can okay. I just respond to that? Please? Sure. I mean, again, we talked about the process and, and um, they're saying they follow the process. You know, out of the West Ejapa District Park, I mean, we've got a lot of people that are waiting for this to be done. This is gonna really push it off. I mean, we're talking months. They're already scheduling four of these new leagues to be inside and are in, are in need this to happen on the timeline that we told them was going to happen. I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm fearful for the people that are, you know, in the in the in the kids and the in the leagues out there that I work very closely with um, are going to have to wait another six months in addition to how long they've waited already. It's, this got pushed off longer than we wanted to initially. Can this be, I don't think this can be done in a week or two. Do we, do we have a, yes, go ahead. do we have a protest on this? Commissioner Moore's question, oh, how sir. long will it take? Okay. How long is the process going to take to redo it? Uh, if we have to resolicit the RSQ, it's probably going to take, because of the money amount, another 30 days back out on the street, uh, get an evaluation committee back together, and a new evaluation committee back together. So 
it could possibly take up to three months to get it redone. And then in, sure then in front of us, yeah. You know, yeah. Okay. Did we have anyone protest the selection? No. I don't know Mr. both Mr. of these companies, but I do know one. Mr. Merrill. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. You know, we, we the previous item we just voted on was a $3 million project. And because we put a focus on local, um, that firm is going to now making money in this county. And Commissioner Wells, I appreciate your leadership helping get that through. Some of this commission struggled with for years, and um, I think we made a great decision on that previous board agenda. When I look at a company like Spring Engineering that's not in the top two, I mean, they build, they build stuff all over the world, all over the country. And I've always had a, a, a reticence where I don't like the way we have these committees set up. We used to have a commissioner sit on it. I've heard discussion where we should have a commissioner sit on it. But I will tell you, all the recommendations that I ever sat on with it as it came forward, I don't think a single one ever got rejected. Uh, some discussions would happen, but, you know, at the board level. But I think this is a classic case of why we need to have a Board of County Commissioner, a member of the Board of County Commissioner, sitting on that committee to go take a look at it. And I know, Com Commissioner Stark, you feel differently. I see yeah. you shaking your head. But I'm going to say that I don't think we ever had a bad decision when you had a commissioner there. And at least you knew what was going on. So again, we got a local firm, didn't make the top nine. And I think their competency was there. So that's why I kind of went with the uh, recommendation. Chairman, if I could. And, um, I understand this is the second one since I've been a commissioner that I've pulled. Um, what's concerning to me are the point spread. Out of 100 points, when we've got 44 or 42 or 30 point spread between one score and another, that's a concern to me. Um, the way this process works is each individual person scores it, and then they sit, go to the meeting with everyone and they discuss it. I find it hard to believe, and this took me three to four hours to go through everything, I find it hard to believe that each individual person, and we have very competent staff, so I'm not trying to, but I, I, sometimes it's hard for me to understand how they scored it when there's no notes. I don't know how a staff person can go through this without having any notes, because I've got pages of notes, so I could go back and look, and if, if they're scoring this weeks ahead of time before they meet with the the entire team to discuss it, I don't know how they would remember it without notes. That's my issue, is if I could go back and look at this and say, okay, this person, okay, here's how they scored, or they were 40 plus points off of someone else that may or may not be an assistant county administrator. I have an issue. It would be nice for me to go back and look at the notes. That is clearly an expectation that you put in writing to these folks. That's really, that, that's what it comes down to. Um, and I still feel the way I do. I know it's gonna delay a, bit, a little bit, Commissioner Moore. I've had conversation with staff on that. I don't wanna see it delayed either, but I think this is the fairest way to do it. And, well, and again, this is the second time that I've, I've those kids. What's you know. going on? I, I've spoken about this before. I 100% disagree putting a commissioner on an evaluation like that. There's a lot of political pressure. Um, and I know commissioners who got behind bars. It's not, I would tell you, there's a reason why our county attorneys, I think, have strongly recommended that commissioners stay off those kind of committees. And um, I'm, I, feel that we have competent staff that um, pick competent companies based on the criteria that are in front of them. So I'm, I'm prepared to go forward. And um, we, we did put that local option in there. And I'm, was that used in your waiting? Yes, ma'am. So, um, and I think it's important to have that local option in there and for local companies to have that extra waiting. But at the end of the day, I, I trust our staff and I, I feel time is of the essence and that we should move forward. Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Moore. So, question, okay, so how many, how many firms applied for this, or for the bid, or put the bid in, sorry? Nine, <laughs> nine were evaluated nine via were evaluated. the written evaluation, yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Chairman. And if it goes out, if it's, so I guess I'm just trying to figure out, if it goes out to bid again, and they write their comments down, and it ends up, in the exact same order, what do, what do we get out of it? I'm just asking. I mean, I mean, what do what do we what do we gain? You gain from putting off. 
you just get the same results based on what you get. If it's the same presentations and the same people bid on it, I don't know. I mean, how, how, what do we, how do we expect the outcome to be different? Well, they're going to put together a different, different folks on this. Again, I'm not trying to disrespect any of our team because they do a great job. But this, and I, I don't disagree with you, Commissioner Starkey. I don't know that a commissioner needs to be on it, but I can tell you that me personally, going forward, I've got them on my, my um, calendar, and I'm going to start showing up and sitting in just to listen so I better understand the process. But I feel confident, commissioners, if you had time to review this entire packet with C25, you would agree with me. But I understand what you're I'm saying. Not, I don't mean yeah. you, Commissioner. Yeah. Just, no, I, I, don't, I, I understand what yeah. you're saying. But I, I guess I'm just, my question is, though, how do we expect the outcome to be any different if the presentations are the same? So but if, if they follow the procedures, process, then I'm okay with that. If it's the same outcome and they followed procedures properly the way that it's outlined by our purchasing team, I'm okay with the outcome. So did Does you follow it, the procedures, how they're outlined? We did. The only thing that isn't outlined in here is that the, the committee did not write down their comments, their exact comments on the evaluation sheet. However, if you listen to the tape uh, of the committee meeting that, that is public, um, you'll see that they did have a good discussion. They uh, narrowed it down to four, and then they had oral presentations, so it wasn't just based on the written. It was also based on oral presentations. Um, so again, the only thing they did not follow was they did not write their actual comments. But I, I think that's what uh, Commissioner Wells is saying, that he can't determine from that, from them not writing comments, why they made the, the scores that they did. So they, I'm just asking, if it, if it comes, so I'm asking the other board members, if this, we go through the entire process again, and they write comments down, and the order comes exactly how it was last time, we're gonna, uh -huh. what are we going to do then? What, I mean, seriously, what, what's, what's, what's it going to be? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Commissioner. I mean, the, the, the procedures, et cetera, yeah, you follow them, put your points down. But again, as, as you talk about the point spread, um, you know, spring engineering, I'll just, I'm just going to tout them one more time. The, they've done top quality work. They got some bad information put out about, against them years ago about a fire station. That wasn't true. That's been lingering for years. So you may have staff people that have kind of watched it go through and there's a bias that's there that maybe they can't, can't do it. The new. buildings, they're, new. they're on the nine, no? Account. Well, they're all new people. They have to re She wasn't here. Eric wasn't here. Ms. Yeah. Ms. Ms. Chair, can I, the, the board, the, the evaluation committee can only take into account what's in the RSQ. You know, they, they, they have to review that, not necessarily take into account anything out or any, any other rumors or whatever else they've heard. They can only really evaluate the packet that's before them. That's that's the process. Yes, sir. In, in the chair of the committee was Eric Breinbach. He's here if you want to ask him questions, too. So, but, but yeah, they. RSQ is a very arbitrary process that can be done to be looked at to select. Now, this Board of County Commissioners makes the final decision of approving what has been recommended. Now, if you feel comfortable that and, and I'm not saying either one of these firms are bad. I'm not saying that whatsoever. I'm just saying we're trying to push local jobs, local companies. We've got a company that does do it, and they don't even make the top group. I just have a problem with that. And I've seen it over and over again with that firm. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Mr. Steinstein. <laughs> I have to disagree with the commissioner that the RSQ process is arbitrary. The RSQ process may have subjective standards in it, but it is anything but arbitrary. All right. Correct my um, word. Subjective. Thank you. Um, in, as in the past, uh, you know, the, one, I think, based on the conversations that, that have been had, you clearly do have the right to reject all bids or all, all proposals and go out again. I think you need to separate the discussion between uh, who sits on the on the selection committee and the one then the selection that is before you, um, but the other thing that you you need to be you know you, you've got a series of qualified folks that have have proposed to you. You've got a short list before you. Um, 
as in the past, you know, if you want to make changes to the purchasing process, I suggest you make changes to the purchasing process outside of voting on a approval that is before you. Uh, yeah, the, the problem that you're going to have is if you start rejecting all proposals because the local didn't get get there, I think that's a problem. I think you, you, you're going to... I didn't say anything. I, I understand that, but, but the Commissioner Mariano has several times brought up the sole local person who was in, the, who was in this solicitation. The, the, um, the other thing that is likely going to happen to the board is that if you go out for resolicitation, some of these firms may not repropose because their proposal was rejected. I mean, what, what we're talking about is rejecting all proposals and going out on the street again, and you may not get the same group of people proposing a second time. With that said, it is the board's dis discretional decision. And I'm wondering if we can even reject it because someone didn't write a note. So um, I, pr I appreciate it's Spring's, no, Spring's frustration, um, and maybe there's something else that can be done to, um, I don't know, uh, with, to um, bolster their opportunities in the future. Um, when there's no bid in front of us on on, on, edu on an education wise uh, type of thing, but I think I think we open the door for trouble if we're going to throw this out because there weren't any notes. Chairman, yes. Sir. Just so I'm clear, this has nothing to do with any specific person. I personally go through these. This is the first one I've seen. What really threw me off to start was the point discrepancies. I find it hard to believe that five or six qualified folks that are on a committee, now they do this all separately, but they're going to score one company over another by 40 points or 30 points. That to me is a huge swing, especially when it breaks down, you know, each tab specifically. And if you, I feel confident that if, if you had the time to review it, you would agree with my decision on this. Um, it has nothing to do with anyone well, being my, local or not being local. There's Almost all of them were within the region, so they got the five points, which is great. So, all but one. Um, you know, I believe the top two were in the region, and they they got the five point um, bonus. Correct. So, correct. Uh, my my vote still stands. All right, we have a motion on the table and a second. Um, please okay. state your motion again, because uh, we've covered a lot of different things. It is to re. Uh, proposals be rejected and that the project be resolicited and the evaluation process be more, th more thoroughly documented as outlined in the purchasing department's specific instructions. And that's your second. Uh, still second, but let me just ask this to the county attorney. Can we ask them to do represent and do it in an expedient way to bring it back quicker? And, and let these notes be taken. I mean, I, I used to take notes Hard of these things as well. You've chosen. Okay, you couldn't. I mean, I mean, you, you know, all right, this company did this, 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 this. You got documentation. What, what's going to bring you through? What would maybe raise your points up? I don't know. I just. Don't I think you, you've already gotten to a, a short list and presenting, and that short list has presented. Uh, it would be highly, highly unusual to then, to then add presenters, which I'm assuming is what All you're right. saying. Let, let me ask this question then. What if we had the presenters come to us and the board just heard it? Mm -hmm. Entitled. I, well, I think you, at, at the point where you're now changing the process from what, from what the proposers had anticipated, uh, I think you would be better off at that point rejecting all and, 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 and if the board decided they wanted to be the evaluation committee the next go round. Then, okay. then do it that way. All right, this time, um, yes. Keith, I hate to put you on the spot. You probably knew it was coming. <laughs> Can I have you come up? I didn't quick? recognize him without yeah. that hair on his face. Sorry. <laughs> so, Keith has spent a lot of time with the uh, groups out at Wesley Chapel District Park. Uh, him and his team has spent a lot of time with them. 
and asking them what their needs are. Um, this was just per first, you know, proposed, and we put it in the budget. Keith even went out to the to the park and asked the the uh, Washington Chapel Athletic Association, um, "Hey, is this is what you need most?" And they said yes. They came back and said this is what we want most. When and this was originally in the plans back in. How many years ago do we think it was? It's, yeah, we've been working on this for a couple of years, yeah. actually. But so. no, originally, though, this facility oh. was supposed to be part of the park many, many, many years ago. Correct. Right? And, and when, we talk, or when you talk to the people that um, play basketball there, for example, um, and what, do you remember how many they said they would be able to um, bring in in how addition to how many additional kids they can bring in? I don't in? remember the number off the top, but I, do, I, I can say they were. It was, very, over, it was over 500. It, it, was, it was a lot, and I remember they were extremely excited to move forward with this yeah. complex. Because right now they're playing, they're literally playing outdoors. So what happens is that, for one thing, it's very hot <laughs> to play on cement. Um, there's no covering out there. Um, they get rained out constantly. Um, I mean, my kids don't play basketball. I mean, you know, except around the yeah. house. But um, I go, I drive out in that area all, a lot, and I see the, them getting rained out when I'm out there for other sports. And I mean, and and then we also there's no place for the girls and boys to play volleyball out there. They've been waiting for years to be able to play volleyball. They're literally going to New Tampa to play volleyball. They don't have an indoor facility in that part of Pasco County, or they have, to, or they travel over to to Land O'Lakes. Um, yeah. I mean, this will put them off. This will put them off another a, a whole other. Um, well, you you'll be season. off this whole season. It'll mess up their whole season. Yeah, and then they're and they're planning for this. Not to put uh, not to put Andrew on the spot, but in terms of timelines, what this would mean for the project, I think either Eric or Andrew can probably speak to that. Just so we have, so the board has a clear picture on where we, you know, from the timeline perspective, because it's not just it's not just the purchasing process. It's just getting started on design, just for uh -huh. clarification. Yes. Well, we got that, we got probably between volleyball and basketball and stuff. It'll put a. It'll, I mean, you're looking at almost a thousand a kid, thousand kids that are going to be put off the season. So the the overall Andrew Baxter, facilities management director, the overall project would be delayed approximately whatever the 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 time is for the resubmission uh, of the bidding process. Yeah. Um, so that's the three month window that Stacy said. But overall, the design portion of this project was supposed to be probably in the six to eight month range, and then construction is about 12 months for this project. Mr. Right. Chairman, I'm gonna pull my second. Um, I don't wanna see the project get delayed. It's gotta go forward. I, I'm glad we've, I'm glad Commissioner Wells pulled it for this discussion. I think for the future, Mr. County Administrator will make sure we have, everybody should be taking notes and clearly listed why as far as how they're doing the rankings, especially on the RSQs. I Mr. Chairman, and, and that's fine, but keep in mind, our decision today isn't because it's going to be delayed. I get it. I'm sorry that it's going to be delayed, but it's about picking the most qualified person. I don't feel we did that. So, yeah, okay. Um, but with, that, with that second being pulled, then there's no motion yeah. this time? And, don't, and I heard her say you can go listen to the audio of the meeting, which is even better than notes. So there is an opportunity to go hear why things were um, discussed and and all those who participated and didn't weren't selected they might want to get a copy of that and hear that as well right. if this, I didn't win a bid I would want to know why and how I could improve so and this time I'd like to entertain a motion so, uh, no, no. to I'll go forward oh, yeah. but this Second. Will, for a discussion this you know in, in response to Commissioner Wells and I appreciate his, his comments and concerns I think maybe we need to have if we need to talk about things procedurally or how things are done we need to have yeah. that discussion um, for things going forward for projects. I'm more than happy to have that discussion. I'm, I'm not willing to sit on a, on a, on a committee for that <laughs> process because I still feel that there shouldn't be a commissioner okay. on there, but I, I understand um, Commissioner Mariano's right. concerns too. I, I got a motion and a second to approve the project. All those in favor say aye. staff recommendation. Staff recommendation. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed like sign? Aye. All right, four to one, pass. Good discussion. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Could I make just a recommendation for staff? I would like to see them go, go check out the other, if not all 67 counties. Find out what other counties have commissioners sitting on these boards and just kind of get, get us a report back. Start with Broward County. 
have to go to the prison to uh, interview some of them. Oh, we're not going. We're not going to go there. So, uh, so that uh, we'll that completes we'll the uh, yeah, consent items. At this time, we're going to go to regular, but we're going to skip over Mr. Cronin's project first. We'll let you go second. Uh, R two. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Eric Breitenbach, Assistant County Administrator in Internal Services. R2 is a presentation for a brief presentation just for your um, introduction. The board has invested in video te VTC technology to allow uh, primarily staff for consent items to not transit both to both sides of the county during uh, board meetings. And we really wanted to display uh, or show a demonstration of its capabilities, which you see on the screen is Todd Bailey, our IT director in Dade City today. And that if uh, he were called for a consent item, he would very much come up to the podium, much like he is now, and be able to address any concerns or questions or present uh, any pull or revised items that the commission may, do okay. so, may see to do. Um, so with that, I'll throw it to Todd. Todd, are you there? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Todd Bailey, Chief Information Officer. This is a, um, a demonstration of the county's technology to video conference from one uh, boardroom to the next cross county to save you know valuable time and resources for staff commuting, only to be used for discussion items for re revisions or items that are pulled, not to be used for presentation purposes where they would require um, someone being there in person. Yeah, so with that, so, it, yeah, it, so just to clarify what Todd just said, this is only for consent items that may need discussion. It is not for regular items, resolutions, or public hearings or presentations. Those will keep, still all be done in person. Right, and it'll keep those folks from uh, having to drive an hour over for that meeting just for a consent item. Correct. And drive all the way back. So there's two hours of time that you're going to be saving yeah. for Correct. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. That's, that's the main time. push behind this. Fuel yes, okay. cost. And, and fuel cost. And yes. All the rest. Mark. Thank you, Todd. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Any Chairman? questions, board members? Uh, yes. Uh, I was going to say, this is, a, this is a tremendous savings, a tremendous uh, addition, great technology. Glad you're bringing it forward. I know we've all talked about seeing our staff people sit like we saw this morning. They're all sitting in here. As soon as consent's over, they all walk out the door. They can pull it up at any time. So yes, sir. great, great move forward. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. R1. I didn't hold you up too long, so... <laughs> no. Good morning. Good morning. Bill Cronin, President and CEO of the Pasco EDC, here in person, not virtually, uh, <laughs> to present the uh, Q1, quarter one uh, results for both our activities relating to the memorandum of understanding that we have with the Board of County Commissioners, as well as our penny for Pasco progress. So without further ado, I will get started, and I'll go fairly brief through some of these so that we have time for Q&A afterwards. Okay. Oops, didn't want to be that brief. <laughs> so pipeline is full. Um, so every, every time that I come, I'll tell you good news about projects that we've won, but also uh, as we continue to feed that pipeline, that's a lot of the activity that you see with our staff out generating leads, events, and as you know, inquiries turn into leads, turn into projects, and hopefully turn into successes. Um, that, that pipeline, represents almost $2 billion worth of prospective investment to our county. A lot of the projects that we've got in the pipeline um, are manufacturing. For some reason, it didn't pop up on there, but the dark maroon color of the pie chart is actually manufacturing. The second largest piece is the blue to the right of that, and that's actually advanced manufacturing, both really good job Can creators. <laughs> Can you hear? No, I well, I'm excited yeah. about that. Very good job creators and um, have good multiplier effects for our businesses. Great. We've had three wins already this year. Uh, those projects, one is still under a project code name. It's called Project Mile. It's a distribution center project that for the final last mile delivery uh, for a name that you'll recognize um, uh, as, a, as a brand name <coughs> that everyone uses. Uh, we also have... Um, a, an existing business, Dixie Bell Paints, that uh, grew out of our uh, incubator and our Smart Start programs. Uh, they grew so big they needed another building. 
They're hiring 30 jobs locally. Uh, we worked with the FBI uh, on a building that you might recall was seized some time ago on the western part of the county, and um, now that building will be, um, will be housed by Dixie Bell Paints, creating more local jobs. Uh, the other is one that you heard about back uh, at the end of um, the calendar year during the holiday season, and that is Phillips and Jordan. Uh, so all of us know Phillips and Jordan, um, 4G Ranch. Well, the family uh, actually consolidated one of their operations here. Uh, it's going up at uh, one Pasco Center at 52 and 75, and that'll be an office building consolidating some of the jobs that are currently here with new jobs. And that represents over $17 million of new capital investment to our county. So you're, you're going to see, because it is the new year, we've got some new metrics that are included in here from our MOU. Um, some of those have to do with working with our existing business and getting out and understanding what those industry trends are in the area and actually creating a catalog of all those industry trends and specifically the obstacles that they have. So that will be ongoing and just starting. Talent and workforce, you'll hear a little more about that on the penny side because as you know we have the new PASCO pipeline program that is dealing specifically with making sure that our talent is aligned with the business needs in our community. We continue to do joint calls with PHSC, make referrals to AM skills you heard about a little bit earlier today, and of course attending industry events around the area. Kind of heavy on the events, but again, at the end of the year, there's a lot of different um, open houses and things like that give us the opportunity to get out, make sure people remember the services that we offer our existing business. And of course, the trade shows and, and market mission events. That's a picture of Tom Ryan from our office. That is the NAOP uh, Commercial Real Estate Conference. We also attended the National Business Aviation Association Conference. Uh, we did that jointly with Zephyr Hills as they prepare to um, extend their runway and attract more aviation business. We also attended some of the larger economic development conferences as well as uh, the Southeast U.S.-Japan conference, which I'll talk about in our international. Made six presentations to local business groups and influencers, uh, included some of the chambers, also the large Discover Dade City event that we had towards the end of last year, really well attended for the first time uh, that they, they conducted that, and that was the uh, Dade City Chamber that did the heavy lifting on that, over two or 300 people in attendance. And social media remains strong. And of course, our newsletters and some of the um, uh, marketing that we, we generally do for the county and our local business. As far as our private sector investment, um, we actually increased our uh, metric for that. Uh, last year was at 400,000. Our goal this year is 481,000. And that is our local business community investing in the PASCO ADC. Uh, as of the first quarter, we're almost um, uh, just over a third uh, of the way of our goal of 188,000 raised in the first quarter. We have 30 uh, board members right now and two new investors, Mirtha and Mirtha, a CPA firm out of Wesley Chapel, and Synovus Bank is, is with us once again. Some updates. Uh, so I talked briefly about the PASCO uh, pipeline, which we'll talk more about the actual program, but we hired uh, Turner Arbor. You'll see him around. Turner is from Newport Ritchie and actually had interned with us. We used to call him the interner uh, instead of Turner. Now he is a full-time employee, and uh, I'm happy to say that our staff actually developed him into uh, to employee, so keeping it local here. Uh, we also hired a new director for our Dade City incubator, and his name is Mr. Daniel Mitchell. Uh, we have Tari Mitchell mm -hmm. on the west side of the county and Daniel Mitchell on the east side of the county, and they're not brothers, and when you meet them, you'll, you'll understand why. <laughs> brothers from another mother, we would say. <laughs> um, our task forces for the year have been identified and kicked off, and, um, and that's the IDA task force, and that's looking at whether or not uh, Industrial Development Authority would work for Pasco County and also a food hub, which is meeting right now as I'm, I'm here presenting, 
and that's uh, looking at uh, food entrepreneurship and tying together that food network. Along that same lines with the food network, we are partnering uh, with the folks over at the Stalling Center with the University of Florida's Ag Extension Program, Dr. Whitney Elmore, as well as other members that are multipliers in that community. And then our legislative update, um, because of the late session this year, we've all gotten a little more time to craft our legislative agenda. Our policy council met last week, and I think we're about the point to put our finishing touches on our legislative agenda, which mirrors very closely the county's agenda as well as uh, the region and the states. Our strategic plan. So we are, believe it or not, in our second year of a three-year plan, um, and before we know it, we're going to have to start planning for the next three-year plan. So within the next three months, you'll start to hear uh, some more dialogue about who we might choose for a consultant to come in, revisit that plan as we get ready for the future. I think some of you have heard me talk about the business needs of the future, that they're, they're very uncertain for a lot of businesses in this day and age where we've got things like uh, Amazon and Uber and robots in factories and things like that. So how we respond to business in this next three-year plan uh, will be very critical so that we can be proactive uh, as those businesses are dealing with new changes in their industries. And I want to invite you all to um, our economic forecast. Each year we bring an economist and it's a real economist. They use graphs and bar charts and all that kind of stuff, but they actually uh, uh, speak in terms that our business community uh, can understand as it relates to both international, global, uh, national, local, and regional uh, state uh, in terms of the economy and what their crystal ball might present for the year coming forward. And it's not too soon to start talking about NetFest. Uh, NetFest this year will be April 4th, it will be once again at the um, Metro Lagoons out at Connected City. And if you recall, this is kind of a cowboy themed event. Well, this year it will be kind of a Caribbean cowboy <laughs> event. So uh, uh, thank Kenny Chesney and uh, we're, we're going to also have the posse out there. Uh, so there will be some real cowboys as well as us that are just dressing up the part. So I will stop there as it relates to the MOU if there's any questions. And if not, I'll proceed into the Penny for Pasco presentation. Thank you, Bill. That do a great job, and uh, I look forward to some of our new businesses coming. So, well, Mr. Chairman, uh, and, yes, and, and this is just—I don't know. My microphone doesn't seem like it's on, but um, just in response to some some of the comments uh, we heard this morning too. You know, um, Bill and his team are doing an excellent job. You know, as, as you can see, things are working here in Pasco, and um, if we weren't one of the fastest growing counties in the state, which we are. Maybe probably the fastest growing county in the state. Um, um, things wouldn't be happening like they are, in, and they are. Um, so when when we hear things um, about people won't, aren't coming or they don't want to come to Pasco County, they are coming to Pasco County. That's not true. That's right. Am I not correct? Oh, you you are very correct. Yes. They're coming. A um, lot of great things in the pipeline, and it also due to our staff. Our staff's doing an excellent job too. If you haven't heard how many permits they are pushing out, um, it's, it's pretty astounding. Um, and I hear from people that do business in Paso County, small, medium, and large alike, that it's never been better than it is today. Um, and that's because of our staff doing a great job and working with these companies to bring them here, um, get them through the permitting process, and taking the time with them, whether it be you know on nights and weekends, they're out there, just they want to get these things done. So. Um, I want to thank you, but um, and that's just in response to some of those comments that we heard this morning. It's, there's not one bit of truth about that. People want to come to Pasco County. Tourism is all is better than it's ever been before, too. So if you pay attention to what's happening here on a week weekly basis when it comes to tourism, i.e., say the the hockey rink, the the, the heads and beds that that that's coming to Pasco County, it's off the charts too. Never been better. So thank you and thanks to our team, Commissioner Mariano. Thank you. Yeah, Commissioner Miller, you're right, and I'm, I'm you know, glad we're moving that uh, project forward that we just voted on as well. It's, it's something that will add more, and I think what we're seeing is because the high occupancy rates we have up and down the 54, you're seeing those hotels come up, and they're coming up fast. So that supply will grow. You've created the amenities. Now it's coming forward. 
And speaking of amenities such as Zephyr Hills Airport expanding the runway, that's that's awesome news. Uh, the money this commission, I think, made a great move years ago to go put money into $2.3 million to go help put the infrastructure in place, all leading to create great things. Um, and Mr. Cronin, you, you've done such a phenomenal job coming here. I mean, your experience, we're just so lucky to have you come in when you took the idea for the uh, overpass business park and ticked it from what we thought might have been 25 acres and turns out it's 91 acres and now we've got something to talk about nationally. Again, something coming on. What you're doing is really hitting on all points. Um, and you know, when Commissioner Starkey gets excited about AM skills and you see uh, Tom Modano and Peter Brzezinski here talking about those high tech jobs and how we can fill every single one of them if we get the training, is just ex exciting times. Um, I want to ask you a question. We completely, I don't know if it's on your radar or not, maybe it is. Um, as far as hemp goes, with the Florida, uh, with the state, the federal government just passing through where now they've taken hemp, which you can't get high from. It's a great agricultural product that George, President Washington grew, uh, Thomas Jefferson grew, uh, it had great byproducts as far as for flooring. Uh, I've got bamboo floors in my house. They could be just as well made out of, made out of hemp with the same type of product. When I, when I think of what could happen with that, I don't know how much you've studied this issue, but every farmer I talk to says it's a product that can actually help what they've got. There could be great water remediation. I'm curious to know if, if you guys have really looked at is what it could do for the county because as we know, so many things, so few things are made in Florida that get exported up. There's rail cars go empty, the trucks go empty, the discounted rates you can get by shipping product. If we can start making flooring, um, making other products that here can be shipped out of this area, build the agricultural base mm -hmm. over and over again, and then creating jobs from manufacturing as well as here. Have you really looked into that, or are you going to start looking at it? I know it just passed, so I, I, I hear nothing but great things about it. Could you give your insights as far as what you think this could do for as far as a product? Yeah, I'll give you a little um, uh, crystal ball because I'm almost 100 <laughs> percent certain that um, our Food Hub Task Force, because it is agricultural based, will probably take a look at that as well, too, because the inputs that go into any agriculture are dirt, sun, water. And there's only so much of that to go around, especially on the dirt side. So I think what you'll hear from the folks in the agricultural community is there's an opportunity cost. We either grow this or we grow something else, considering that our land is finite, too. And uh, unless we start looking at uh, indoor growing and, and the use of large pieces of land to do grow houses and things like that, it's still finite. So where we're at in the county uh, as far as having product, and you might recall our plan, our strategic plan actually talks about Pasco's product, meaning land and buildings available for industry, for targeted industry. This is something that we'll be, we'll be watching because it uses up land and or buildings, and we've got to make sure that it's a fit. We usually don't get into the, down to that commodity level in the early conversations. We're looking at big pictures as ag in general, for example. Um, so it's not going to be corn versus hemp initially until we make sure that, in fact, uh, the land and the product that we have available is suited for that. And the same would be said for manufacturing. You saw in my presentation we had a big graph that said manufacturing. Well, I don't necessarily say automobile versus robots versus toys, those types of things that we get, get into that exact commodity. For us as, as economic developers, main thing is making sure we've got the right workforce that's ready for it, which we do have a long history in agriculture, uh, especially on the east side of the county, yeah. and then having product available to be able to put these so that we don't rob Peter to pay Paul. Uh, for quite a long time, our county's had a lot of um, retail and residential growth and not so much on the job creation side. I think we're, we're blessed that at, at this point in time, we have the ability to start attracting some business where we've got land available with that workforce. And the county has done a great job in concentrating on product with the uh, low interest loan program for buildings, the old pads and pores program, as well as our certified sites program. So long answer, but it was a great segue into some of the stuff that, that we're working on. Uh, and if I could just follow. And, and one of the things with, with hemp, other than medical marijuana, you have to grow medical marijuana in a room, controlled, documented, et cetera. The, the thing with hemp is you can grow it outside, so those farms. So yeah, it's limited to what could be grown. 
they say can actually help a lot of other crops as well. Right. But looking at a target industry part is where you have one industry that comes in, if you have like the amenity, bringing it forward, now you're going to make where you can actually grow this all over the place. And if you are a hub, which I would think we could be, a hub of growing it everywhere, and someone who benefits from CBD oils uh, for pain in my back from a car accident from years ago, I've seen the no, no side effects, takes away back pain. I don't have to worry about taking Tylenol or ibuprofen, which I'm allergic to anyway, where it can hurt my liver. There's no side effects. When I look at the revenue made from the CBD oil that's out there, whether it be from medical mar from mar marijuana or from uh, uh, just hemp, which you can't get high from, et cetera, but mm -hmm. the benefits that are there, if we become a focal point to that and, and, and create a hub or it, I think we can create a synergy that can create all those other things that can fall off it. So, you know, from plastic auto parts to the rope to the, to the flooring, if you would dive into that a little bit more and take a look, I, I really appreciate it because I think is, there's an opportunity what we have going in the county. Like I said, I, I totally expect that, that we're going to be looking at all of those things because of this uh, task force that we're working yeah, on. So. Thank you. That's good. Commissioner Wales? And I'll be brief because I know we got several other things, but um, and I know you have more to update, but it's been an honor to serve on the board. You know, I've, I've, uh, it's enlightened me on to see so many leaders from the region that serve on this <coughs> economic development board. And, you know, as we discussed, I'm, you know, I'm going through leadership Tampa Bay this year, and two weeks ago we were down in, let's just say, Hillsborough and Pinellas, and they talk about the region, they don't even mention Pasco County. So it's a little, I almost, put them on the spot, but I did not. But I know that this week is Pasco Day for Pasco County, so I, I know it'll be an opportunity for us to remind these future leaders in my class that <clears throat> we are part of the region. We are the fastest growing. We have the workforce. We have the team, and it's just, mm -hmm. it, it's interesting. And we talk about even like Dixie Bell. You know, he used to work for the county um, in the development side, and, and he was looking for a building, and he was going to build one, but we bought outside the box and found the old A-plus fireplace on Ridge Road, and, and we've worked with them incentivized to keep a local company expanding. So it's just one, it's a little example, but it's still those little, little, yeah. you know, success stories add up. So anyhow, thank you, Bill, for everything you and your team do. Well, I'll, I'll go through the second part at a pretty rapid clip because both of you all actually, three of you all actually touched on some of the subjects as it relates to the penny. Um, but I want to draw your attention to the, to the title slide. Um, the young man to the left is, um, uh, is Mac Kimura, and Mac is now doing lead generation for us in Tokyo. And uh, in the recent visit that we had to the Southeast U.S. state delegation to Tokyo, every other year um, there's an exchange between ourselves and Japan, uh, he was able to set back-to-back uh, -back appointments for me for a week of prospective investors that are looking to do business on the east coast of North America, specifically Florida, because they've always been Californian-centric. And he's got several weeks more of potential uh, uh, <coughs> candidates for us. So stay tuned on the Japanese front. This is something that's been overdue uh, for a lot of the eastern portion of the United States. And, uh, and, and again, I'm going to, you've got this in your notes. Uh, I'll just go to the summary slides so that you can know the high-level stuff and you can look at the other uh, at your leisure unless you have questions. But the Ready Sites program that I referenced earlier in terms of um, uh, making sure that we've got land that's evaluated and ready for industrial sites, uh, we ended the year last year with 1,266 acres evaluated and we've already got another 100 plus acres um, this first quarter. God bless you. Of, um, of land available for job creation sites. And um, other sites will be going through assessment. I'll continue to update you on that. Highly successful, by the way. And we're marketing those sites. So when you saw the picture of Tom Ryan at the NAOP conference, that was one of those certified sites in the back. I'm sorry, the evaluated sites in the right. back of that picture. International program, uh, we led a regional trade mission to um, uh, Chile. And this is with Global Tampa Bay. So this is with Hillsborough and Pinellas counties. Uh, we had two Pasco companies that participated in that. You might have also seen coverage from uh, Big Storm Brewing. Uh, did uh, had some really good appointments down there. Evidently, the folks in Chile want some of our beer. Um, and the SEUS Japan uh, state delegation, again, honored to be part of that state delegation uh, to meet with the Japanese. Next year's meeting will be in Savannah. 
the following year back to Tokyo, the following year after that will be Miami. So it's really important that we stay in front of them as we get ready for that visit to Florida. And then the FDI mission, those are foreign direct investment prospects uh, that won't be named until, of course, we get to the point of announcing them and they locate here. Uh, CEO Roundtable, we had our forum in October, over 30 um, CEOs participated in that, and we'll do that a couple times a year in addition to the actual CEO roundtables. Enhanced marketing, we continue to put uh, messages out about these sites that we've evaluated and the new product available. Uh, Smart Start, uh, one of the things that we learned as we went through our, um, our agreement with you all is that a lot of the people we serve in Smart Start are different than the people that we serve in other areas. So we've got to actually focus on a different marketing message for those individuals in order to reach them. So that's a new effort for us this quarter. We also had two more microloan applications that were received this quarter. We're at over $1.3 million out on the streets with local businesses creating jobs. And the pipeline. So the PASCO pipeline is up, it's running. Uh, the first year, a lot of that is gonna be gathering data. So you will see Turner out in the field. He'll be working together with our business retention staff as well as career source in gathering information. Uh, and then next year, you'll see a website that actually has a tool associated with it where business and employees can match and we make sure there's alignment with potential uh, employees with industry. So for example, uh, one day you're hiring an engineer, the next day you're, di you're, you're gonna hire an admin. You're gonna go to two different places for that and this helps businesses navigate that spectrum. The other thing that this particular program does is as it gathers data, we start to see trends from our local businesses and we determine are these uh, obstacles or challenges that can be um, resolved systematically, programmatically, rather than one by one by one, it, rather than doing triage on every company that needs help, if we see enough trends, we can actually create a program and help everyone in the county. So data is one of the key things that we'll be looking at in that program. And with that, I'll stop as we touched on the big bucket items for the Penny for Pasco. And again, thank you again for, for all your support. When we're out there uh, talking about business, one of the things that people are most interested in is that we do have a pro-business climate and that we've got uh, five commissioners that, as it relates to business, you guys generally agree on anything that has to do with business, and it shows when we, when we talk to our prospective investors coming into the county. So thank you for your continued support. All right, thank you. Thank you. So we'll move on to R3. Good morning, Commissioners. Mark Bellis, Performance Management. And uh, before you, you have a copy of our FY18 Annual Performance Report, which is the status of what we committed to in our business plan for FY18. So I'll take you on a brief tour of that here today. Uh, it occurred to me, uh, listening to Mr. Cronin, that uh, here in Pasco, we really have kind of a unique challenge because a lot of the counties that we compare ourselves to, the Hillsboroughs and the Pinellas, they are wound up mostly in maintaining things that already exist and then renewing those areas that need to be renewed. Well, we do that here in Pasco. We have of course, the, uh, a lot of deferred maintenance that thanks to this board we're finally getting after. We also have renewal strategies. We have a harbors plan and, and uh, other major corridor plans. We're also one of the fastest growing counties in the country right now. So all three of those major areas really require different operational strategies, which is a unique, uh, unique challenge for us. But I'm, I'm pleased to say that we, uh, we are doing really quite well with it. Uh, at this point in time, uh, we are, um, there we go. We are, and I can say this, uh, I'm coming up on seven years here, we are now pulling together as a team. We are making things happen collectively. There is still quite a bit of change uh, in the works, but we are putting together more infrastructure uh, through leadership systems and through change management to ensure that everyone is part of the solution, which helps us to move forward. I am also very pleased to say that uh, last year, uh, as compared to this year, we have an increase of 14% in employee engagement. Uh, that's significant because employee engagement really determines productivity 
determines uh, things like uh, retention of good folks. So I can say that in the time that I've been here, I have never seen us attract better folks, keep better folks, and take better care of our folks. So that's all part of making things happen. So as a result of that, some great things are occurring. We are again being real, uh, recognized both locally and nationally. The, uh, there are three pages in the, in the annual report, six to eight, that outline the details of those. We're very proud of that. And as the report is set up, there's a new piece this year because we are focused on your strategic plan. 2018 was the first operational year for the 2021 strategic plan. And each of the goals in the plan has, uh, or each of the uh, areas of the plan has uh, four goals, and each of those goals have strategies, and they have measures to help us determine how well we're doing. So uh, the first few pages from 10 to 13 will outline how well we're doing on the particular strategies applied to the goals. This is how we make that all happen. It is uh, really great to realize that even in just the first year of the plan, that uh, four of those areas we've already achieved completely. Uh, so it's pretty nice to do a four year in one year. So we're moving forward very quickly with that. As we have in the past, the annual report is set up for quick review. As you go through each of the items and the action items, you'll see the status. There are icons there, uh, both with a picture and color for those who uh, would like to have pictures and or color. I said there. And uh, so you'll see that as we move through the plan, that the majority of, and these were actually the largest amount of action plans we've had in any of the plans that I've seen here, uh, the majority of them were completed as intended in the year. Uh, the uh, larger, other large percentage are those that are multi-year projects and those uh, that we had goals for in one year have been achieved. The others uh, are either on target, there's a handful that we didn't get to, and actually out of the six that we did not get to, Four of them were just pushed into FY19, and then two of them were changed based on operational or strategic changes that just made more sense to go in that direction. So as you want, to, as you want the details of this, pages 15 to 38 will uh, show you by strategic goal the actions and activities, and then specifically what their status is. And again, we can provide you any additional information on any of these, but it's good to be able to tell the stories when people ask you, hey, what's happening with this project, what's happening with that one? And we're getting better at that as well as far as uh, how we describe that moving forward uh, also. The next section is pass go by the numbers. And this really gives you an idea of how much of the work uh, is going on. It gives you the volume numbers. And while these aren't key indicators for performance, because we don't just look at how much we do, we look at how well we do it. And those are quality measures. And ultimately, as a county, when we get to that level we call premier, not only will we be able to measure how much we do and how well we do it, but we're also going to be able to determine, is anybody better off because we did? And as a county, and as we get to premier, and as we get to that high performing, that's what our, our goal is. <clears throat> We have a tremendous amount of folks doing amazing work. We've got 2,300 uh, team members here. They represent 57 lines of business to over 500,000 customers, covering 740 square miles. Big organization, very, very big. In the, in the corporate world, that would be a conglomerate. And uh, we're doing amazing work every single day. To that point, uh, almost 25% of the organization got uh, called out specifically for doing amazing work above and beyond, which is outstanding. Again, we believe everybody comes to work every day here to do a great job for our citizens, and we're seeing that more and more, and we're very, very confident that, uh, that because of that, we continue to deliver better <coughs> services. You will see the top of that uh, food chain here today in the, uh, your, your uh, employees of the year, which will be this afternoon. We're very, very proud of what they have achieved. It was uh, difficult to decide on who was uh, going to be the top, uh, because we've got so many great performers doing so many great things. But uh, again, getting better every single year. Uh, a year ago, I stood up here and said that we are in the middle of a shift from being reactive to proactive, realizing that there's never going to be enough funding to just throw money at solutions. And that's exactly what we have been doing. We've gotten very, very good by program of understanding what our customers need specifically and then realizing whether or not we're able to or are effectively meeting those customer requirements. So we feel very, very good about our level of service and what we're able to provide. So to that end, it leads to excellent service delivery. It allows us to focus on the actions and activities that achieve these uh, requirements. 
also allows us to keep an eye open for those things that might prevent us from meeting those requirements. And these are things that we measure and look at on a, on a consistent basis. You find that uh, if there are gaps out there, things you shouldn't be surprised by, then we should be able to measure them and, uh, and not be surprised, but be able to um, address them. We've gotten in the mode of questioning everything. Business as it used to be is no longer. We question everything. We improve everything that we can, and we continue to do that. That's on a regular basis. Just as an example of that, uh, when I had presented the citizen survey data, you asked a very specific question. Are you using this data in operations? And absolutely, we are. And we've actually started to take that to the next level. And I'll give you a, an example of just one way that we're doing that. This particular model that you're seeing right here, this was recognized with a, a national award here in, uh, in uh, fiscal 17. We started proving the concept of this a number of years back. And this kind of alignment allows us to listen to our customers and respond before problems prop up, before they, before they pop up or, or issues happen. I'm going to give you a specific example here on this one. If you look at um, our customer service, for example, So as an example, customer service. Our customer service department handles anywhere from 13 to 15,000 phone calls every month. They have another 3,000 people walk into our buildings asking questions. So in addition to the fact that this produces over 1,000 work orders for our citizens, it also presents us with a huge amount of information that we can then analyze to look for common trends, look for issues that more than one citizen might be happening, uh, might be happening to, or to um, identify frequently asked questions. Once we have that, then we can do something proactive about it. And I'll give you an example. I mentioned that we were proving this concept uh, a couple of years ago, and a lot of it was in central permitting. That was a great place to start. By listening to the customers and going through that information and that data, we identified a lot of opportunities for improvement. And a lot of the processes that you've seen improved over the last couple of years came out of that listening to our customer mechanism. So with that, you have customer service providing incredible information that we can do something with. It allowed us to use that performance development piece to improve the processes. It also identified areas where our staff needed additional training on the new processes, on customer service, on the various things where there might have been gaps. So it identified that and allowed us to apply those resources that way. And then, of course, once these are all in place, using the communication function, to help our citizens understand what great things are going on and what great changes have been made. So back to your direction to us to push out positive information as we're continuing to get better and better at what we do. And that's incredibly effective. I'll give you another quick example of how effective pushing that positive information out is. Animal Services uh, recently took on uh, using the Finding Rover face recognition app and software which is really a unique and innovative process. So between animal services and the media relations and communications team, they put together such a strong release that that release went out and was picked up by over 100 other TV stations and online sources, reaching over 2.8 million people. Positive information saying Pasco County doing something great. So this model is working out really well. And again, it's just one one example of many that we're, uh, we're doing across the county to, uh, to get the positive message out. So as we move forward here, we continue to focus on our master plans and the actions and activities that are in there. You'll see that in this annual report, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the results that have come from that. And a lot of the highlights that you're looking at are, again, a result of good people doing really good work every single day. So you've got customers, the satisfaction numbers continue to go up. You saw that. Uh, when we presented the survey data information a couple of months ago. Again, our citizens feel good about the direction we're going, the direction that you are leading, and we're seeing that internally and externally. So the two of those being together, that's very, very positive to see. Signs, signs of growth, Mr. Cronin shared a lot of that with you. We're seeing big things happen. We're seeing people want to come to Pasco. This is not the place to avoid anymore. It's a place to come to, and, uh, right. and it's, it's because of, of the great things that we've been doing. Uh, continued investments, you can see uh, the overpass road project. We're building new fire stations, better equipment, special teams. We have new bus routes. We're storing the library hours, better online services, and again, continuing with this process, imp process improvement absolutely every 
So we've got a lot of momentum. We're doing a lot of great things to achieve this strategic plan. We just we had a little bit of a wake-up call the other day because we're talking about planning in our 2020 budget. Well, in 2020, we, it's time to revisit the strategic plan again. So you got a little time yet, but uh, we're almost to that point where we revisit this, see how well we did, and see what you want to do to, uh, to move us in the next, uh, the next four years. Again, what we're doing in our planning is making sure that the actions and activities that we do in that business planning process are going to achieve the strategies in the strategic plan, moving us forward, getting us that much closer to Premier each and every year. So, okay. questions? No questions? Start here. Uh, I'm not sure if it would fall under you, but um, I, you know, working with the Harbors plan, and I'm out there in the community all the time <coughs> pushing it, a, a comment came to me that, the, you know that that brochure was written years ago, and I just wonder if we're going to update any of those um, brochures so I c we can give more up to date information and, and even additional information when we're out talking about it. Okay. Commissioner, we're actually going to update the infographic. We're putting together an infographic with some of the latest data on the harbor's plan specifically because that question that came up. Okay. And just so you know, in, in 17, it was $220 million worth of investment in the harbor's plan. In 18, it was about $180 million in investment. So between the two years, almost $400 million worth of investment in that area. Private. That's, that's private dollars. It's not public dollars. It's private dollars I, in I, that area. So it's we're we're putting that infographic part together for you, and we'll get it to you here shortly. And I, I want to make sure we were able to push that out. Oh. Because a lot of people are still saying, "You've forgotten us over here on the west side of the county. Everything's going to Wesley Chapel." There's we, a know, we know they're getting all the rest <laughs> of the restaurants, but um, we need to you know talk more about the successes we're having over here on the yes, west side. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We'll Absolutely. get that out not only okay. just to you, but also out on social media as well. Your so. And we are actually working more toward providing these resources online. Just a good example is at uh, the Ridge Road website, using that to present all of the truth, one version of the truth, one place, all the facts. And we can do that with any kind of a subject. So we're looking at that across. I find the it very helpful to line. have that brochure to hand out, but I need, I just need that more information, like the investment amount, yep. updated and. Yep, we'll get you. We'll get to you, and we'll and, get it out. As and well. now we're starting to work on the gateway, yes, uh, more in depth, like we are in the harbor. So yes, ma'am, that'd be great. Commissioner Mara, thank you. You know, Dr. Bellis, you always look outstanding, but I think that tie is just over the top for our <laughs> GQ award of the, of the day. Pocket <laughs> thing, man. Yeah. Um, sure. You know, when when I look at page 27 uh, on the tourism part. Um, it, it, it talks about attracting and retaining national and regional state sporting events, but one of the things I don't see on there uh, is we've actually worked with St. Leo, we work with PHSC, uh, Florida State, and we've actually had beach volleyball tournaments out there, but I don't see any reference to that. Uh, sand soccer tournaments, it's not a, maybe it is a, a regional thing, maybe it's a statewide thing for sand soccer tournaments could be held out there. And I want to say our staff, by the way, since we've taken this park over, has done an amazing job. People that have gone out there looking, running events there, I just thrilled with our team, how they've jumped into the park. Uh, they've actually got uh, Gary Grubbs in more involved again because he likes the action that he sees out there, the, the, the care. The second bathroom is now open, uh, which leads me to a, co a couple of things. Concerts should be a real good thing coming up there. We're going to have one up there on, with the Care Center for April 13, 14, but that should be a, a beach concert venue. Somehow we need to go take a closer look at that. Uh, wakeboarding is not mentioned in here, and we've had the Red Bull, which got n international attention when we had the, the boating part over on Sun West Harbor Towns Lake, and they went down for the uh, re regular ski cable thing down in, uh, uh, down in Tampa. Right. Now we can run the whole event here. That, to me, that should be in this. When I look at the parking lot that's out there, though, one of the detriments, we still have a dirt parking lot. Now, I know the RFI is coming up pretty quick, but I think we should look very closely at kind of going out there, fixing our drainage that's out there, and go put a, even a thin layer of asphalt out there, so at least people can park out there. So if you're going to run some of these events through the year, wouldn't cost a lot of money. And we talk about all the money we're spending in Wesley Chapel. I know Commissioner Starkey, you hear it all the time, and I'm sure Commissioner Wells does. Why is all the money going to the east side? Well, you get a premier event out there, a beach that everybody wants to go to. We need to go put some of that investment into that park and, and promote it as a national, international destination. Um, there's a part where you talk about boating a little bit later on. You've got three quarters of a mile of a 90 foot to 110 foot wide channel that's a straight shot that connects to not only the lake we use, but the lake beside it. 
that could be a prime spot for docking. And if the people can actually take the boats in there at high tide, they don't have to worry about getting out for low tide because it's 7 to 12 feet deep in that whole channel. It's a tremendous amenity we need to go forward. So as we're going to talk about let's make sure the harbor plan is going to work, there's an asset that we need to go take care of. All the money committed that we just you know, voted on today to go for the Wesley Chapel uh, indoor facility, let's go take a look at what we can do to that park, and it should be part of this plan that's in here. Other than that, the plan is fantastic. Just one thing, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, real quick. So I don't want to stroke your egos too much because I did that earlier. <laughs> but but, but uh, what really stood out to me is, is the comment cards, 86% positive. It's very easy for people to write down negative comments. It's not difficult. Um, people are more apt to say something negative than they are positive. We hear it in the mornings here all the time. Um, but that's excellent. Yes. I mean, I know when I first got here just a little over four years ago, that wasn't the case. Um, I saw quite a few negative comment cards. Right. Um, I got quite a few negative emails about customer service. Um, and I don't get those like I did. There, you know, there's randoms. There's going to be. Sure. Um, but nothing close to when I first got here. Yeah. So thank you for making my job easier. <laughs> <laughs> the, the team's I do, I do appreciate it. But I think, you know, and I, I will you know, prop the commission up, too. I think one of, that's one of the focuses of this commission has been for the last four, four and a half years, and again, Dan and the entire team, is is to um, in, increase Six our... Years. Six years. Well, okay, I'm talking about since I've been here, but I trust <laughs> you. I trust you. Um, is customer service and um, <laughs> providing that service to, to our customers, which is our citizens yeah. and our constituents. So it, um, it's, thank it, you all for that. So congratulations. and It's real clear across the organization that everyone understands we're all in the customer service business. Yep, and, and you're exactly right. And I know and great, Commissioner great Wells, team. probably more than anybody, has, has spoken that since since I've been here day one, yep. you know, given his background. And um, it's it's good to see that um, you guys followed up and, and positive things are happening. So I can understand you. how the three commissioners on the west side feel like they've been left out a little bit. But I've been here 73 years, and we're finally going to get a <laughs> Four Lane Road to the east side, <laughs> and I kind of appreciate that. So <laughs> I can understand, but I'll help you all the best I can. So. <laughs> our growth has finally come our way, so that's all I can tell you. But great job, Mark. Thank you all for your continued doing. support. So. We, we, we wouldn't be where we are without it. So right. thank you. Thank you. Team. Mr. Chairman, if I could, too. Oh. And, and just to say that this, this Board of County Commissioners is doing some tremendous things up and down. We're, we may not agree on every single item, but we can talk about it. We discuss it. It goes on, we move, but we're getting things done like I've never there seen. Are. I can't tell you how proud I am to serve with you guys. I'm proud of the way we all work together. We I always say that we come from different walks of life. We meet here and we discuss it, and we come out uh, for the citizens of Pasco County to a very plus for all that. So thank you. I'm going to move on to R4. I'm a little late. This is supposed to be 1130. <laughs> <laughs> uh, government services have been working very hard on our customer service aspect. I'm going to invite Amy uh, Elmore to the uh, communication coordinator to the podium to introduce a video where our customers are actually talking about our level. Of Hi, Amy Elmore, Branch Communications Coordinator for Development Services. Uh, when I first started working at Pasco County, I noticed that there was something different about the culture here. And what I noticed is that there were leaders everywhere throughout the entire development services team, and they didn't necessarily have management positions. Uh, these leaders didn't just ask, did I meet my deadline? But they said, do I have what I need to meet my deadline? They asked, do I have ideas, innovative things to make sure that our processes were working best for our customers, that we were providing the best customer service that we could. And I felt empowered in order to, to truly provide what my customer and my community needed. I also began to find customers throughout the development services uh, team, customers throughout our community, who were wanting to let the entire development services team know that these changes to our processes and these improvements to our customer service were making a difference within their businesses and throughout Pasco County. So this is their story.
quality of customer service has been outstanding. Beyond satisfied, absolutely beyond satisfied. It's a completely different mindset. It's a completely different approach. The county's been taking extra care and working together with us and a team approach. I think that the Paso County has made strides in development of procedures and programs to where we have a relationship built with them. So when I do call, uh, we have somebody that we know each other by name and we have an opportunity to get in front of our problem. It's so important that the customer service within any organization evolves with its customers and I think Pasco County is doing a great job of that. The other thing I've seen is that there's more interaction between the county staff and the community at large. We have an opportunity to talk with people because we go to the vertical codes and the horizontal codes meeting. Looking at something and saying yes I can help you and I understand what you want to do and, and I'm going to help you do it. Um, that makes all the difference in the world. Listen, in the past five years, the changes that have come to the permitting department, the planning department, the zoning department are completely different. Um, just a breath of fresh air. It's, it's nice to walk in and see a smiling face and shake hands with someone. And, and then when you make a phone call and they're picking up the phone and, you, and you're talking to someone and they're finding you answers and, and they're getting you the answers that you want and you need, it's just, it's, it's a great feeling. All commissioners, all five commissioners I know very well, and they all have focused very hard on customer service. The attitude is, is that we are your customers, and you need to be treated like a customer. And that's exactly what Don Rosenthal says every time I hear him speak. I think Pasco has a great future. The future of Pasco County is so bright. It's in a perfect location. It's right where you want to be. It's exciting to help build the communities that we live and work in. I think that Pasco County is going to lead the region. I think one of the best decisions we've ever made is to better accommodate what we do for our clients in Pasco County. And the county's staff has been the keystone for that success. Good job, good job. Jennifer Motzinger and Stu Gibbons for being here. And <laughs> the video. So, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Very nice. Very cool. Okay. With that, um, that finished up the regular items. We'll move on to old business. We've got about 10 minutes. Um, Mr. Moore. Thank you. I do have two quick items. Um, the first one that's asked the board to reappoint Paul Fenora to the VOPH um, Planning and Policy Committee. So if I could have a motion. Uh, I'm the motion, so I have a second. Okay. I got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, like so? Pass. Motion Thank passed. You. Thank you. And one more is the concert for the cure is coming back up at the Heritage um, Park Community Center on Saturday, February 16, 2019 from 12 to 7. And I was going to ask the board if you could, we could waive the park fees once again. We've done that every year since I've been here. So that's a motion. motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion passed. Great. Thank you. And just one more thing. Um, you said two. I know. I apologize. <laughs> just, a, just a quick thing. Um, <laughs> for anybody that's interested in um, cricket, um, as you probably know, um, We've been playing, not me, <laughs> others have been playing cricket at it, um, Wesley Japlin District Park on a regular basis. Um, and they're going to have a pretty big women's tournament this weekend wow. there. Um, the women's cricket team from uh, uh, USF is going to be playing there and some other teams. So it's pretty cool. They're doing a lot of great things there. Um, I was out there one time and they even had a team all the way from Minnesota that, was, that played okay. there. So they're going to be there this weekend. So. It's, right. uh, it's a pretty Thank neat up-and-coming sport, so. All right. Thanks. Commissioner Stark. A um, number of things. I visited uh, the offices of Touchpoint Medical last week um, and um, toured their facility and looked at their manufacturing and um, brought them up to speed on, on uh, Amskills and what it could do for them. They're very excited to come up and tour Amskills. They're bringing lots of manufacturing jobs, and the skills that we teach in Amskills is exactly what um, they do down there in, in Old Mar, so it's perfect. Um, I uh, also am working on setting up a commercial kitchen with uh, Metropolitan Ministries. You know, they have that donated kitchen from um, Well Built, and it's just sitting there idle. And now that we've opened up our Starkey Market, so many locals have come to me 
and want to sell their, the food that they make or the sauce that they make, and we can't because it has to be done in a commercial kitchen, and there are none here. I'm very excited about when the library is going to open theirs, um, but I think the need is huge out there. And um, so I'm working with Metropolitan Ministries to see if we can't want, get one going right away. Um, I am very excited that 54 and 41 construction the improvements are going to start pretty soon, that little tweak Is that um, we, week? yeah, so I've, I've heard um, that, that that will start in the next month or two, and that's the uh, lengthening of the turn lanes uh -huh. and the little adjustment there, which I think will shorten those lines up. Um, if you drive down Starkey Boulevard, you will see that the Starkey Gap is under construction, and um, maybe this week they're going to be um, pouring the, the asphalt that will connect the Pinellas Trail to the Pasco Trail, so we're, we're all very excited about that. Uh, February 22nd is our rescheduled lectures on the lawn. We had to move it twice. Every time we schedule it, we get a tornado warning. <laughs> so um, I'm hoping third time we'll get it through. And uh, again, this is the uh, film that um, follows the group that did the Florida Wildlife Corridor Project from the Atlantic Ocean all the way across the Panhandle, and it's just a beautiful part of Florida that most of you don't know anything about. It's called uh, the Forgotten Coast, and again, that's free. Um, and we have a food truck coming that does barbecue. I can't remember the name of it, but I'll get brochures for you as soon as they, I get them in hand. Um, so um, I can't even read my mm -hmm. handwriting. Oh, I am curious if we know when Raymond James might start breaking ground out there in Wesley Chapel. Has, well, that's, has, yeah, has that moved at all? Yeah, that's, well, okay. Really and then um, I just want to um, restate that, um, and a, that anyone, any federal worker that has, uh, is not going with, is going without a paycheck, I've offered, um, we have free coffee for them at the market. So it's, I hope that and soon, and I think I've seen some things that the county is doing as well, and I hope you'll talk about that when you, when you on. get We're to coming. you. But um, we'll get there. apparently we have a lot of Coast Guard folks that live up here, and I, I, I feel for them. So. Can, I, can I just tag on something real quick? What? On, you, you mentioned 41, and I should have jumped in right there. <laughs> um, Secretary Gwynn called me after the MPO meeting last week right. <laughs> in reference to the, uh, the wadding on, on 41, and one of the things his staff did not clarify very well, because if you were there, you noticed I wasn't very thrilled about pushing it back a year. He stated all that's going on is from one fiscal year to the next. Yeah, like a month. Well, that, he, he mentioned that on the other yeah. project. A month or two. But it wasn't on this project. So yeah. okay. this essentially could literally just happen a few days later. They just want to get into the next year. So we're okay there. Yeah, yeah we're good. <laughs> we don't need to do anything else. Okay. Commissioner Wells? Yes, sir. Um, I guess this time I am report it. We'd like uh, United Way to come forward. Oh. Is he still here? He is. He is? He's hiding uh, back there. Yeah. We're talking about in the process with the government being shut down. It's affecting some of our folks here with 501c3s in the county, and we're here to address <coughs> that. So. Kathy okay. Harrison, Assistant County Administrator of Public Services. And so, yes. Um, we, this is Chuck Anderson, I'll let him introduce, he's on his second week of the job and <laughs> approached him on Wednesday and said, what can we do? And he'll explain to you what we have done. So um, hopefully uh, the board will, will be satisfied with what, it's a little bit of a help for our not-for-profit agencies, but Chuck will let you know there was a survey that went out to all the agencies and the results of that. So with that, Chuck Anderson, our United Way Director. Okay. Thank you. A pleasure and an honor to be here uh, before you, and uh, it's uh, been a busy first week and I guess one day so far. Uh, I want to say uh, the federal government shutdown has had a huge impact on agencies, individuals, a lot of people. Uh, a survey was done of our agencies. There are two in particular who are uh, in danger of uh, not being able to continue their programs if they do not receive some type of uh, interim funding uh, between uh, now and the first of the upcoming month. And uh, the uh, survey uh, confirmed uh, that fact. Uh, we uh, communicated with the county about how there could be some type of a loan uh, that United Way could serve as an intermediary to uh, make uh, those funds available to those agencies on a temporary basis. 
uh, once the government were to, uh, federal government were to restore funding to the organizations, they would reimburse us, and we in turn would reimburse the county. Uh, I hope that, uh, is that clear enough? Is there some more yes, I could share? What is it? Right. Mr. Williams? Okay, and I, I haven't got a chance to meet you, but I serve on that board as well, so I look forward to Look forward to working with you. I know you have some shoes to fill with Alice. And, uh, sure do. But I've sure heard nothing do. but great things about you and look forward to the future here in Pasco County with your leadership. So thank you. Thank um, you. So with that, I move that the county provide a short-term loan from General Fund Reserves to the United Way in the amount of $400,000 to be used to assist those United Way agencies that receive federal government funding and that have been unable to receive that funding as a result of the federal government shutdown. I further move that we delegate authority to the county administrator to enter into a loan agreement with the United Way that requires these funds to be repaid within 60 days of the conclusion of the federal government shutdown. The terms of the loan agreement will also be subject to the approval of the county attorney's office and the clerk. Okay. Second. I got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Uh, discussion. So, discussion. so the, the monies will go to you, and then will you disperse all the monies out to the agencies, or will you be um, keeping your eye on the disbursement and how we, that goes? We would do the disbursement. We would monitor to make sure the agencies used it exclusively for the program in danger of being interrupted. And at the point that the federal government restores <coughs> funding, within 30 days, we're expecting them to give us the funds back so we can, in turn, reimburse the county. Okay. Our motion and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like say. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, and thank you for the agencies. Most importantly, thank you for the clients. Uh, there are so many people who would go unserved without the support. So thank you on their behalf. Have a thank great day. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Wells, time. you got other things? Um, and I know Commissioner Starkey brought it up, and I think, Dan, you're going to talk about it as uh, us, you know, obviously waiving fees for utility customers that are part of the federal shutdown to make sure they're they're obviously not negatively impacted with that. Um, we are having another Moon Lake cleanup in February the 23rd and 24th. Um, Dan's kind of overseeing that. I know we've got with John Power and, and his team, and sure. looking forward to everyone in Moon Lake coming together again to to better that community. And there was one more thing. Um, and I know I've talked about it. The scallop season we had last year was a huge success to the county. You know, it brought you know seven figures of economic impact to West Pasco, um, which is very, very exciting. Um, they did approve a scallop season for this year, which will be July 19th to the 28th. Um, and the reason they decided to do another 10-day season is because of the red tide and the blue-green algae. They really didn't have time to get up here and check the numbers and so forth, which they will. So we're excited to have another 10-day season, and hopefully going into year 2020, we can expand that season. Okay. So thank you all for your support on that. Good job. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm going right. to need a little bit more time, but Commissioner Wells, just as you touch on that, would you like us to try to get them to try to extend that further? Not not this year. Um, not this year. I think we're I think good. this was kind of in the plan when they first did the It, it, it kind of was, yeah. It, it yeah. was. It was. Just, I to, mean, just so we're sure we're not negatively impacting the fishery. So it's, and especially with the, the green algae and the, the red tide last year, would, which did impact a little bit of Pasco County. They just we want to be sure. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I need more time. So I know it's almost noon time, so we have almost a break. Noon. But I would love to introduce, this is Katie. Mm -hmm. She's okay. The, yes. Hi, Katie. She's from the Pace Center for Girls. Um, from the time when we had all the Pace Center for Girls last year, I had reached out to Gail. I said, Gail, if any, any other one wants to take, any other ladies want to take interest to come before the board, I'd love to have them all as they want to come in, meeting to meeting. If there's more, we can even go further. Um, and we do have Alexis out in the audience. Alexis, go ahead and wave. Uh, she wanted to come, out, come along as well. And Diana, thank you for bringing these ladies here. But the, the Pace Centers for Girls does such a phenomenal job. And to, to see Katie take an interest in this, I'm honored to have her stand, stand beside me. So thank you for coming. Great. Thank Their you. breakfast is coming up, I believe. Maybe we can put a plug. There you go. February, yep. February 8th. February 8th, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Good. Right. I believe we'll all be there, but, you know. And you want to cover yours now or later? Or? <coughs> I have an announcement I want to make before we break for lunch, so. Okay. Well, as, as I think two of you have already mentioned, that uh, for uh, federal workers that are furloughed and not getting paid, we are waiving you know, late fees on utilities to make sure that they that that shutdown doesn't impact their service delivery of, of water and, and sewer services. 
We're also looking to make sure there's no other areas of our service delivery that need to do the same thing. I think right now that's the biggest thing out there is the utilities, but we're just checking some other things as well. Um, do sorry. we have um, a, a place for people, a page that people, people can go to see what is what free things are available to them? Is someone in the county organizing that? Because I, I do think we need some kind of resource center. Yeah, I'll, I'll, center. I'll work yeah. with Kathy and we can we get something on the public that. services side because they, they'd be the ones that would bring all that together. So okay. we'll, we'll bring that resource together. So uh, I, I sent you all out a uh, note last week, uh, some end of year numbers. The one that jumped out at me was, you know, 49,917 permits were issued last year. You know, that's 50,000 customers through that, that, that department and with our inspectors and everything. Effectively one permit per every 10 people that live in Pasco County. So that, there was a lot of work going on, a lot of work going on, a lot of good customer service happening in that department. And you don't get that without making sure you're taking care of your employees. And over the past couple of budget cycles, you all made sure to make, to help us take care of our employees as part of that process. So thank you for that. Okay. But that's that's happening there. And we're working on some other ways to reward employees too. I don't want to talk about it a whole lot right now because I don't have a lot of time, but there are some other things going we can on. We come back to you after so, after public. Uh, anyway, just those are the, the two biggies. I uh, don't really have anything else other than some stuff we can talk offline or in the future. So. I'll need to bring mine back this afternoon if you don't okay. mind. Do you have something? I do. Okay. Um, I want to talk about two events that are coming up. Do you want me to do okay. that after? after well, we can do it after, okay. but I want to announce this one thing we had before we could break for lunch. Everybody probably has heard, but we had, Dade City Business Center had a two-alarm fire over the weekend, which started on Friday. Uh, the response uh, consists of various crews from the Pasco County Fire Stations from A-Shift, 14, 16, 19, 20, 21, 24, 27, 32, 34, 36, 37. A lot of people involved. Also from Pasco County Fire Rescue are the following additional resources. Squad One Special Operations Team, uh, Truck One Ladder Company, Air Truck Two Air Support, uh, Public Information Officer, Arson Investigator, Fire Investigator, Multiple Volunteer Firefighter Social Projects, IT Support, Battalion Chiefs, uh, four, three, five, and two, and then six staff chiefs. The mutual ad resources that were called in from the following, Pasco County Emergency Management, Pasco County Sheriff's Office, Dade City Police Department, Zephyr Hills Fire Rescue, Hernando County Fire Rescue, Plant City Fire Rescue, Sumter County Fire Rescue, and Tampa Fire Rescue. At Motion. At the height of the fire, there were approximately 114 personnel on the scene working to mitigate the uh, incident. The, the um, fire was officially put out around 19 hours after it had started on Friday. Crews uh, maintained in, on scene and well into the next day, extinguishing spots and ensuring the, that the fire was fully extinguished. There were no injuries. That's the best part of the whole thing. There was no injuries. The fire started like, um, I believe it was about 1, 12, 31 o'clock on Friday, and that fire continued. You could see it from downtown Dade City, and just black smoke. It's hard to figure out what was going on at the time, but it started in one warehouse and moved from one to three warehouses, and it affected five out of seven businesses right in that area in the business center. Um, also, uh, we were, we got support from, uh, Bubba Q's barbecue delivered food out there to the, all of our folks and also Publix, uh, delivered food out there also to help out. And with your permission, I will send out letters of thanking each and every one that helped in that process because <coughs> it was, um, quite a deal and we hadn't seen that in a long time in this county. So, Absolutely. uh, Every experience like that's a learning experience, and uh, they, they did a great <coughs> job, and they, they had it maintained. So we got to be thankful for our fire service people and rescuers. They did a great job. A lot of things happened. They even had to shut down the uh, railway, and shutting down a railway is very hard to do. <laughs> so uh, they had water maintained on, on the premises of uh, the business center. They were able to get enough water to take care of what they needed. 
without shutting down 301. The only other water source was across 301, and we would have had to shut down 301 if we'd have used that rather than the water right there on the business center. So they worked through that. So, but you see your firefighters and rescue people, thank them for all the work they do. So it's, it's very important, and we will send out a letter to thank each and every one of them for what they did. So, okay, with that, uh, we can adjourn for lunch. Got to start back at 1 30. the Pasco Board of County Commissioners meeting January 22nd, 2019. I'd like to remind everyone to please silence all electronic devices. Uh, now we'll start with resolutions. Okay. RS1. RS1. Can Mike Legg and Ron Altman please come to the podium? Okay. Resolution number 19-78, a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, recognizing Mike Legg as the 2018 Employee of the Year and Ron Altman as 2018 Leader of the Year. Whereas, in order for the organization to become premier, it must attract, grow, and support a workforce of servant leaders dedicated to improving the lives of people, contributing to a purpose larger than their individual job, and performing at the highest possible level in day in and day out. And whereas each year, an employee or team of employees of Pasco County is named Employee of the Year and Leader of the Year, and are recognized for their accomplishments. And whereas Mike Legg, has been selected to receive the 2018 Employee of the Year Award, and Ron Altman has been selected to receive the 2018 Leader of the Year Award. And whereas Mike Legg and Ron Altman consistently demonstrate our core values with an impeccable work ethic, dedication to service excellence, and achieving quality outcomes in every situation, they serve as an example to their fellow team members of going above and beyond and exemplify the expectations of employee of the, of the year and leader of the year. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, that said board hereby congratulates Mike Legg on being named the 2018 Employee of the Year and Ron Altman on being named the 2018 Leader of the Year for Pasco County and com commends them for their outstanding efforts in supporting the county's premier journey. Done a resolved in regular session with a quorum present and voting this 22nd day of January 2019. Move approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Mr. Biles. Just uh, real quick, want to kind of explain to the board the process we go through because this isn't just a couple names out of a hat. <laughs> we started this. Some of these departments are given, you know, monthly employee and leader of the month awards. The uh, fire department, I think, gives out four different awards on a monthly basis, and it all accumulates, builds through the department to the branches, and then at the end of the year, the assistant county administrators and the rest of my senior staff sit down and go through those final branch nominees. And at the end of the year this year. Mike Legg and Ron Altman stood out above everyone else, all 2,500 employees, as the employee of the year and the leader of the year. And, and a lot goes into it, a lot of competition. We have 2,500 employees that show up to work wanting to do a great job, but at the end of the year, you can only pick two, and these are the two that got picked. So I want to kind of roll out to you what the magnitude of that award is and the fact that these are two of the best, highest performing employees you know, across the entire enterprise, and they happen to end up both in public services to Kathy's. Pat, <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, before you had a chance to say your words, I think they may want to say one or two things, but just wanted to thank them for that and all the hard work they do every day uh, out there helping the people that live, work, and play here in Pasco County live better lives because of what they do. So thanks. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Excellent. Thank you. Who's going first? Who's first? <laughs> oh. Well, I'll, I'll say it and get it over with. <laughs> you got to speak in that. There you go. I would like to say it's an honor to uh, have this uh, 
this uh, position or title given to me. Uh, but I couldn't have done it without the staff that I work with. And I'd like to uh, recognize the library and the different departments in public services for uh, nominating me. Thank you. And for me, too, it's an honor. I want to thank everybody that was involved with this. Especially, I want to thank my team. Guys, stand up. Everybody, come on. Sarah, everybody. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, I cannot get through this day without every single one of those individuals that stood up. You know, the job is hard enough as it is, but they all play their part. They all make their sacrifices. And every day, we just make animal services better and better. Excellent. Great. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, um, it's, it's our pleasure to um, have y'all here, and it's also our pleasure to recognize y'all today, because even though you're at the top, the rest of them are pushing at you, trying to be there themselves. So, And for um, Kathy, congratulations on your department with, with putting in the outstanding employee and the leader out here today. But I'm sure that Don and his other departments are going to step up now. They're going to, they'll be right there. It was close. So it we got 2,500 great leaders and great employees. So I'm very thankful for all of you, not just the two, but all of you. So other questions? I just want to say thank you, gentlemen, and congratulations. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. OK. And this kind of goes back to what happened this morning you know, during the reports. And we talk about customer service. And this is, you know, obviously, staff's priority is, has been to um, increase the a positive customer service comments on our comment cards. And it's been one of the board's priorities. So you know, what you guys are doing is amazing. And ev everybody here is amazing. And I know you weren't, a lot of you weren't here this morning. But to um, see the positive um, feedback we're getting from the citizens now better than ever before I know it makes each and every one of us proud. So thanks for everything you do. Congratulations to both you, but thanks for what everybody in the audience does too. You're very much appreciated, and, and um, we have a great team here. So. Okay. And ditto for that. And ditto. Well, we're fine. We're good. All right. Let's um, go down front and get pictures. Yes, I will. Take this. <clears throat> up top and then go back up again. So Guys. 
Can <laughs> everyone in a little closer if we could please? Let's fill it in. Older I get, the more they look like that. I was honored when I'm should be good. I said, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He missed one. Thanks, guys. Guys, congratulations. Hey. Is anyone here for Friends of Animal Services? Of course. And Pasco County Animal Services, please step Ooh. up to the podium. Resolution number 19-77, a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, commending Friends of Animal Services, Inc. for their generous support to Pasco County Animal Services. Whereas Friends of Animal Services, Inc., Friends, is a nonprofit organization established for the purpose of enriching the lives of pets at the Pasco County Animal Services, PCAS, Adoption Center, and improving the likelihood of adopting new, uh, sorry, adoption into loving homes. And whereas the mission of Friends is to provide funding and material items that enhance the health, welfare, and environment of sheltered animals, assist shelter staff in, pl in placing adopting animals in loving homes, advocate responsible pet ownership through education and the promotion of spaying and neutering, <coughs> companion animal training, vaccination and county licensure, and foster public interest in and support for the Pasco County Animal Shelter and its services, and whereas friends raised additional funding this year by actively pursuing donations, grants, and event revenues, such as the annual Wolf Stock event, <laughs> and substantially increase their support of PCAS by providing over $81,000 in funding. This represents 215% increase over their 2017 funding efforts. Since 2008, Friends has provided substantial funding to PCAS, totaling $245,070. And Raz, Friends generously contributed this funding towards veterinary advancements at the PCAS shelter, which includes new medical diagnostic equipment and the replacement of other key surgical equipment. Friends also funded heartworm treatments for 29 shelter dogs, which improved their health and helped facilitate their adoption into good homes and funded a number of emergency medical needs of individual shelter animals, including orthopedic surgeries, amputations, and other life-saving medical treatments. ANRAS Friends provided PCAS with two additional large play yards for the behavioral enrichment of shelter dogs, which included shade sales, equipment benches, and fencing skirting. Friends also purchased four sets of new washers and dryers for the shelter, provided a promotional wrap for the new specialized mobile animal response team, trailer, repurchased behavioral enrichment items for both cats and dogs, along with various other items for our Pasco shelter pets, and funded over 400 foster pet sterilizations in preparation for their adoption. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, that said board hereby commends Friends of Animal Services, Inc. for their generous support to Pasco County Animal Services to improve the lives of shelter pets and to provide them a better chance of finding a forever home. Done and resolved in regular session with a quorum present and voting this 22nd day of January 2019. Move for approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion passed. Welcome. I know we have a few folks there that don't like to speak in public. It's a joke, by the way. So, um, <laughs> if I could, real quick, before I ask you to say say a few words to the board, I mean, truly, the success that we're seeing with Mike and his team is not possible without each one of you um, helping. As far as even what we had on consent today to adjust some fees to to help offsets and things, not to mention the adoptions and how we've moved to. 
less euthanizations, obviously. Um, it's, it's been unbelievable the way, how far we've come in the last five years that I've been here. So I want to personally thank each and every one of you for what you do. So did you, you want to say a few words? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. <clears throat> Before I talk about friends, I just have to say what a great thing it was that you just did for your employees. I mean, that was uh, a great recognition that you do back during my time on the board. Um, for you guys to sit here and say that you have 2,500 great employees, that's really, that's, that's a great accomplishment. During my time on the board, when somebody asked me how many employees we had working for the county, I said, well, about 50%. So you guys are really doing a, a really good job <laughs> having 2,500 employees. Some things never change, Jack. <laughs> I want to thank uh, the Board of County Commissioners on behalf of Friends of Animal Services for recognizing the uh, work that we do. Uh, and we certainly want to say you have an incredible staff at Animal Services, from Mike right down to the whole organization. And it was proved today by the recognitions that you did prior to us. They are incredible. That organization is doing a thousand percent better than it was 10 or 15 years ago. To go from having 40 percent of the animals come out alive to now 90 and above is incredible for a public shelter and, and everyone involved should really be uh, thankful for that. To the folks that are involved in Friends of Animal Services, it couldn't uh, be done without about, uh, you. and. Uh, we have a very able body and, and beautiful president here. <laughs> You're not biased. I'm sucking up a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, Friends of Animal Services was started to provide um, things to the shelter to enhance the lives of the animals that it really was not appropriate for taxpayer dollars to be spent on. And uh, it was March on Parks in 2007 when a county employee came up to me and said, hey, we need help out there. And so, Friends of Animal Services came up from that, and the, the Save 90 program is pretty amazing. The money that you mentioned in the resolution that uh, we have raised, you now I want to highlight really three additional things that have happened really since that resolution was written. In November, our tax collector identified us as being the charity of the month, and with that campaign, we raised over $11,000 from that. We were one of the highest raising charities uh, that he has had during his, that program. In December, this was a really a great way to end the year, the last day of the year, I was asked to go over to the Hook Law Group because they were distributing money from an estate from uh, some very loving people who, who cherished animals, and they donated over $49,000 from their estate to our organization. Oh. Yeah. That's great. And we are in the process right now of implementing a grant that um, we received $5,000 of special funding for adoption of cats, and that is uh, being given by the Pasatino Foundation. And Philip Pasatino, who is representing his parents, are actually here, <coughs> here today, um, as they were very hardworking Americans. They started out with nothing. Uh, his mother was part of um, uh, an organization that actually helped invent the color TV. Wow. She raised five boys, uh, truly an, an honor for uh, a place in heaven for, for her, and her husband, Robert, Philip's father, was a stockbroker on Wall Street, and through a lot of good investing, he created um, a foundation of which we are a recipient for, which will help adopt a lot of cats from Pasco County. So we wanted to say thank you to them. Mm -hmm. So thank you, everyone, and thank you for the leadership that you all have given. Thank you. Okay, if we can all go down and yeah.
trying to explain the process. Like People are the most important. <coughs> Now we go to RS3. If you're here for resolution RS3, which is in regards to the hurricane relief, please step up to the podium. Is no one here for RS3? Oh, I well, see them. There's plenty of people here for RS3. It may take a little shy. encouragement. <laughs> okay. There they come. Resolution number 19-76, a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, recognizing the efforts of county government employees who deployed throughout the states of Florida and North Carolina to help the citizens of Florida and North Carolina during Hurricanes Florence and Michael that occurred during 2018. They worked selflessly and tirelessly to aid citizens and their property and came together to support outside agencies, emergency operations centers, and various emergency support functions. Whereas during the 2018 calendar year, two hurricanes man made landfall in the Southeast United States, including Hurricane Florence, a category one hurricane that made landfall in uh, Whitesville Beach, North Carolina, causing catastrophic flooding in North Carolina and South Carolina and Hurricane Michael, the third most intense Atlantic hurricane to make landfall in the contiguous United States, making landfall as a category four hurricane in Bay County on October 10th. And whereas Paso County Emergency Management, Fire Rescue, Building Construction Services, Facilities and Public Safety Administration employees nobly responded to these emergencies in multiple capacities. And whereas these responders participated in search and rescue, damage assessment, and recovery efforts, providing, provided support for both the Gulf and Bay County Emergency Operations Centers, established and operated the mega shelter for residents of Bay County, and provided telecom response 911 operations. And whereas the Florida Division of Emergency Management, University of South Florida, Hernando County Emergency Management, Sumpner County Emergency Management, Hillsborough County Emergency Management, Pinellas County Emergency Management, City of Lakeland Fire Rescue and Police Departments, Manatee County Emergency Management, City of Sanford Fire Rescue and Collier County Emergency Management provided volunteers who joined with the Pasco County responders in putting forth extraordinary service. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, that said board recognizes those, worked, those who worked tirelessly to aid citizens and protect public and private property and remembers the efforts of all those who came to the aid of Florida and North Carolina citizens. Done and resolved in regular session with a quorum present and voting this 22nd day of January 2019. Move to approve. Thank you. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I all just opposed, have to like say. Motion. <laughs> I, I have no doubt that, um, you know, when we had our, our hurricanes here and, and people came from counties all over, we, we heard that they went back and said, wow, they, they really know what they're doing in Pasco County. And, and, and um, of course, now we've lost Kevin because of it. But I have no <laughs> doubt that you um, <laughs> we don't that you lose represent, any more of you, though. <laughs> that you were the stars up there helping and that you represented our county um, um, fantastically. So I, I'm just so proud of you guys. And I, I couldn't wait to um, have you come in here. I'm sure we all are very proud of you. And, and to thank you. Um, 
from this commission for giving up your time to go out and help other Floridians and other Americans and citizens in need. So just really, I'm sure everyone wants to say something. But And I would love to hear some stories. So. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? I'll, I'll, I'll go. No, yeah, thank you all okay. for everything you did. Not just, I mean, this was a great endeavor and, and <clears throat> very much appreciated, obviously, by everybody in the entire state. But thanks for all you do for us on a daily basis. You know, without you, um, you know, we, um, our citizens wouldn't be safe. And you help keep our citizens safe on a daily basis, and we, we thank you for that. So. Yep. Yep. Marino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the team. I, I think, especially the past few years, the great job you've done in giving the citizens of this county confidence, knowing that we're prepared. Uh, the experience that you got by making that extra effort to go out and work with others that are definitely needed our services and help uh, only benefits your experience even better for the future. And, and, and I love just the state coming together and the, the nation coming together when we have an event like this. And you guys were tremendous leaders, so thank you for, for stepping up when you didn't have to. So uh, what can, does anyone have any stories to share with us? <laughs> Yeah, they're living out of suitcase. I, I, I do want to, there's, there's some more people that need to be recognized in this, and it's not only the fire rescue 911 or emergency management. We also had teams from public transportation that deployed. We had teams from utilities that were going to, to deploy, but they were not deployed. But and, and in essence, it's the whole county that makes this team work. Um, we're very fortunate in our emergency management. Uh, I got a stellar people that work with me. They're hard workers. They know their name. They know their games. And when they came back, some of the stories that you could would actually hear, um, it, it, it's amazing how much it can change it for us when we have this type of emergency. I'm trying to figure out who you are oh, yeah. with the suit and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally did not recognize you back there. <laughs> it took me a second to figure out who you were. My new dig. I know. It's your new dig. <laughs> Get a promotion. You bought in the suit. Yeah, but, but really, uh, in, in fact, all of y'all make this a premier county, and we're proud of each and every one of you. So, well, I know you saw probably some pretty traumatic things. I know my family went through um, Andrew in Miami and lost their house while they were in it with my, my, my niece and nephew that were two and three years old, and the whole house came down. Yeah. So, um, I, and, and they still need our help up there in the panhandle. They, um, thank God that wasn't us, you know, a year or two ago. But again, we, we thank you and I invite all the commissioners to come down. Unless anyone else wants to say anything? Anyone else wants to speak to us? AJ, you going to be uh, quiet or? Oh, no. He's not allowed okay. so <laughs> to speak. Um, we, we you know, uh, there's, <laughs> I almost wonder if they should come back here. Probably want to come up here yeah, and we'll you stay up there. Thank, yeah, thank we'll you. stay up here and y'all yeah. come on. Okay. You go down front and hand them the flag. That'll work. AJ, how you doing, bud? Good, sir. You didn't call me to come help you up there. I helped you in, in our county. Good to see you. Congratulations. You don't need any curse words or anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. Congratulations. Lucky to have you. Let the chief in. You got to back up in there. Yeah, he's tall, but he's standing on one side. Please, just so you're not right in front of JJ. No, just <laughs> go, go in front of Chief. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Next is RS4. Is um, anyone here for the cervical can cervical health awareness month? Thank you. <laughs> resolution number 19-79, a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, declaring the month of January as cervical health awareness month in Pasco County. Whereas January is recognized nationally as Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, which is an observance that promotes education about cervical cancer causes, screenings, and treatments. And whereas cervical cancer most often affects women in the prime of life, and whereas in 2018 an estimated 13,240 women nationally will have been diagnosed with cervical cancer and 4,100 70 women are estimated to have lost their lives to cervical cancer. And whereas regular cervical cancer screening tests are effective in detecting the disease at an early stage, and whereas human papilloma virus, HPV, is a disease which is the main cause of cervical cancer, vaccines are available to prevent HPV. And whereas through the combination, combined use of screening tests and vaccines, an effective means of preventing cervical cancer can be provided. And whereas Premier Community Healthcare Group Incorporated provides low cost or free well women exams, including pelvic exams and pap tests to all women regardless of an ability to pay. In the most recent fiscal year alone, 4,142 women received a cervical cancer screening through Premier's clinics. And whereas increasing awareness among patients and healthcare providers alike regarding the best use of these prevention tools is a key component in safeguarding women's health. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, that said board hereby declares the month of January as Cervical Awareness Health Awareness Month in, and encourages all of our citizens to recognize that cervical cancer is preventable and to encourage and support the women in our lives to take in taking charge of their health and availing themselves of the tests and vaccines that have proven so effective in preventing cervical cancer. We have the means to prevent this disease. It is incumbent on all of us to ensure we have the will to do so and join the fight against cervical cancer. Done and resolved in regular session with a quorum present and voting this 22nd day of January 2019. Move to approve. Second. I got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Good morning. You've been here all day. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Uh, yeah. Would you like to, to speak on this before I come down and give this to you? Sure. Absolutely. First of all, thank you very much for the recognition um, for Premier. I am the lucky one that gets to lead our organization of 200 employees that's providing health care, um, accessible health care to everyone in Pasco County, regardless of their ability to pay. Um, and we fight. Um, the cervical cancer, not just in January, but all 11 months. So, but I do appreciate the recognition. Um, we will continue to provide primary care and continue to expand our services as we continue to grow. Excellent. And there was a great article in the paper today on this. So, yeah. okay, so I will Thank come you. Down and give it. Okay. Thanks for all you do, Joe. Yep. Do Thank a great you. job. Thank you for it. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. <coughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, that's all the resolutions. We'll move on now to the public hearing, and we will begin with P1. Um, Do we have a sign-up sheet? I don't have any. Nobody signed up? I don't have a sign-up sheet. Do you have proof? No one signed up? I no do. one signed up. Got proof. Okay. okay. Good afternoon, Mr. I'm sorry. I'm Just sorry, sir. Let me give proof real quick. Um, notice was published in the Tampa Bay Times on December 24th, 2018. Did I say November? December 24th, 2018. December 31st, 2018. January 7th, 2019. And January 14th, 2019. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Jeff Jenkins with Planning and Development. Item P1 is an ordinance establishing the Weirgrass 2 Community Development District pursuant to Chapter 190, Florida Statute, providing for authority and power of the district 
providing for powers and duties of the district, providing for the Board of Supervisors of the district, providing for the district budget, providing for functions of the district, providing for miscellaneous provisions, and providing for an effective day. Locust Branch LLC had submitted a petition to the county to, um, to establish this community development district to be named Wiregrass 2 CDD. The CDD is located um, in the area that's cross-hatched, uh, and then you'll see the outer boundaries of Wiregrass Ranch, um, DRI. So this is a small portion, um, sort of in the area of parcel S2, uh, that is under consideration before you today. CDD is uh, located within the Wiregrass Ranch DRI MPD. It would be approximately 515.268 acres. The CDD will contain approximately 900 single-family homes that will be assessed. And the recommendation is to adopt the ordinance. Okay. Is there... There's no one signed up. Is there anyone here to speak to? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, Scott Sheridan with Locust Branch here on behalf of the applicant, 3717 Terman Loop, Suite 102, Wesley Chapel. Um, we work closely with Jeff and staff on this application. Looking forward to keep moving forward at Wiregrass Ranch with another project, and we're here to answer any questions you may have and appreciate your support today. Okay. Anyone else from the audience that wanted to speak to this item? See no move for approval. Second. Okay, this is an uh, ordinance. It's a roll call vote. So, Madam Clerk, if you'll call the roll. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 1, Chairman Oakley. Aye. Motion passed and adopted. P2. Uh, Madam we have proof on in the Tampa Bay Times on January 11th, 2019. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Denise Hernandez, Planning and Development. Uh, before you today is an ordinance uh, by the Pasco County Board of County Commissioners uh, amending Chapter 50, Health and Sanitation, to repeal Article 4, Restaurants, Division 9 of the Pasco County Code of Ordinances, entitled Mobile Food Units or Push Carts. The reason for this ordinance repeal is, as you may recall, the Board of County Commissioners last year in September adopted Ordinance 18-36, which would allow for mobile food operations throughout the county. And this has been codified into the Land Development Code, Section 402.5.A, Temporary Uses Mobile Food Operations. So uh, the actual code of ordinance language is um, outdated. It's actually also redundant with what the Board of County Commissioners passed last year. So we're just asking you today to accept public comment and adopt the ordinance repeal by roll call vote. Okay. Is anyone here from the audience to speak? Because there's no one signed up for this item. Seeing no one. Approval? I got second. a motion. Second. Second. I got a motion and a second. Roll call vote. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 1, Chairman Oakley. Aye. Thank you. Motion adopted. Okay, P3. P3, we have proof of publication in the Tampa Bay Times on November 16th, 2018. Erica Winlands, Planning and Development, item P3, PDD 190490 is a large-scale comprehensive plan amendment in the name of C. Powell 1809 Hagman. This is an adoption hearing, so I'll begin by reading the ordinance title into record. An ordinance amending the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan providing for a large-scale comprehensive plan amendment to the future land use maps, map 2-15 and sheet 20, changing from residential three dwelling units per gross acre to PD plan development, on approximately 46.1 acres of real property located on Wisteria Loop, approximately 550 feet west of Land O'Lakes Boulevard, and a text amendment creating sub-area policy flu 
7.1.47 Hagman in a map amendment to the future land use map 2-9, amending subarea map 2-947 Hagman, providing for repeal or severability in an effective date. The subject site is located in the Central Market area on the, on the north side of Wisteria Loop, approximately 550 feet west of Land O'Lakes Boulevard. Here is an aerial view of the subject site. Land O'Lakes Boulevard and the Pasco County School District Office is located to the north. The Pasco County Elderly Nutrition is located immediately adjacent to the east, and there is single-family residential located along the southern boundary of the subject site. The subject property is approximately 46 acres, and this uh, comprehensive plan amendment does have an accompanying MPUD zoning amendment. The applicant is requesting to add an additional 17 dwelling units for a total of 130 dwelling units. Under the current Res 3 flu, it allows up to 113 single family dwelling units. Here's an inset map representing the existing flu Res 3 and the proposed flu PD plan development. Uh, the subject site is predominantly surrounded by Res 3, and as I've noted before, the school district office is located to the north, along with uh, Land Lakes High School, and the elderly, elderly nutrition is located to the east, and there are wetlands to the south and west. Uh, the proposed PD uh, plan development project is providing for a mix of land use intensities and open space. Uh, the amendment has a subarea policy, policy flu 7.1.47 Hagman, which will place a density cap on the number of potential units. A uh, transportation needs assessment was not required. And with that, planning and development recommends approval of this large scale comprehensive plan amendment by roll call vote. Thank you. Okay. No one signed up for this item? Hmm? This one has an applicant. Applicant, yes. Applicant can speak. Mr. Chairman, Clark Hobby, Hobby and Hobby PA. The mic doesn't want to stay up. 109 North Brest Street, Tampa, Florida. Uh, we agree with staff's recommendation. I know I asked for a little extra time. I don't think it's going to be necessary. And if it's OK with the chair, I would just reserve it. And if it's needed on the MPUD item for some reason, then we would use it then. But other than that, we're, we're happy. There was no objection from DEO, and no one objected uh, at the transmittal hearing. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. So anyone from the public that has not signed up would like to speak to this item? Seeing none. Uh, one second. Okay, second. And then discussion. All right, discussion. Um, as I, I met with the applicant, and I just wanted to remind him that this area has the Orange Belt Trail going through it somewhere. We don't know exactly where yet, and I, and I, I do hope that Wisteria, um, as this road gets developed, has some kind of pedestrian and cycle, at, um, sidewalk, trail, whatever, on there, so. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Starkey, for reminding me. And I also meant to uh, tell you, I did check with our group and was reminded that we do have a sidewalk on our portion of it. So if the county runs it on its property next door, then we've got about at least a quarter mile run, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that on Wisteria. Is it so a sidewalk or a, a wider? Side, it's a sidewalk. Well, maybe something can be done to make it wider so people can cycle on it. But, okay. But, um, okay. I don't know the particulars of the area, but just always want that to be kept in mind. Understood. Thank you very much. Thanks. I have a motion and a second, and this is on roll call. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 1, Chairman Oakley. Aye. Motion adopted. Okay. P4, this is consent. And Mr. Chairman, you're moving into your uh, rezoning agenda. Would you like me to read the procedures? Yes, please. There are two rezoning agendas, regular and consent. Staff will present each application to the Board of County Commissioners. If staff or planning commission has recommended approval and there is no opposition, the application will be considered by the board without further presentation. If staff or planning commission has recommended denial, or if there is opposition to the application, the applicant will be given five minutes for presentation. The opposition will be given three minutes for each individual or five minutes for a group representative, and the applicant will be given three minutes for rebuttal. 
any individual disagreeing with staff or planning commission recommendation or anyone wishing to object to any condition of the rezoning may at this time request the petition be pulled from the consent agenda, in which case that application will be heard under the regular agenda later on during the meeting. Otherwise, all rezoning applications on the consent agenda will be approved by a single motion and vote. If you wish to speak to any petition, please give your name and address and whether or not you've been sworn for the record. These are quasi-judicial public hearings. The law in Florida is that mere public support or opposition of an application is insufficient for this board to take action. Please limit your comments to those criteria for rezoning found within the board's land development code. Madam Clerk, would you like to swear them in? Swearing one in. This one. Is anyone here to speak on any of the rezonings? Please stand up and raise your right hand so that you can be sworn in. Okay. Do you solemnly or do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give is the truth? So help you God. All right, P4. I'll go ahead and um, state the proof on yep. P4, Tampa Bay Times, November 16th, 2018. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Denise Hernandez, Planning and Development. Item P4 is your companion to what you just heard on P3, which is CPL 18-09. This is a PD, PDD 197337. It's a zoning amendment for Hagman and PUD Master Plan Unit Development. The request is a rezoning from an AR, Agricultural Residential District, to an MPUD master plan unit development district to allow a total of 130 single family detached units on approximately 46.77 acres. This comes to you with a recommendation of approval with conditions from both the planning and development department and the planning commission. Is anyone here to speak against this item? Seeing no one, uh, remain on consent. P5. P5 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on December 21st, 2018. Item P5 is PDD 197376 in the name of Michael and Adrian Zampella. It's for a change in zoning from an agricultural residential to an I-1 light industrial park district. This comes to you with a recommendation of approval from both the Planning Commission and the Planning and Development Department team. Is anyone here to speak against this item? Seeing no one that remains on consent. P6. P6 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on December 21st, 2018. P6 is PDD 197377 in the name of May Storm and R Michael Rustine. And this is a change in zoning from an R2 low density residential district to an AR agricultural residential district. This comes to you with a recommendation of approval from the Planning and Development Department and the Planning Commission. Is anyone here to speak against this item? Seeing no one, this will remain on consent. P7. P7 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on December 21st, 2018. P7 is PDD 197378 in the name of Brian Morty. It's a change in zoning from an AC agricultural district to an AR1 agricultural residential district. This comes to you with a recommendation of approval from both the Planning and Development Department and the Planning Commission. Is anyone here to speak against this item? Seeing no one, it remains on consent. P8. P8 was published in the Tampa Bay Times December 21st, 2018. P8 is PDD 197379 in the name of Daniel De Pasquale and Kevin Singletary, and it's a change in zoning from <coughs> C1 Neighborhood Commercial to C2 General Commercial District. This comes to you with a recommendation of approval from Planning and Development Department and the Planning Commission. Is there anyone here to speak against this item? Seeing no one, it remains on consent. P9. P9 was published in the Tampa Bay Times December 21st, 2018. P9 is PDD 197380 in the name of Affordable Golf Carts, Inc. This is a rezoning from C2 General Commercial and AR Agricultural Residential Districts to C2 General Commercial District. This comes to you with a recommendation of approval from the Planning and Development Department and the Planning Commission. Is anyone here to speak against this item? Seeing no one, it remains on consent. P10. P10 was published in the Tampa Bay Times December 21st, 2018. Item P10 is PDD 19 CU 16 in the name of Pasco Ranch Chipotle Mexican Grill. This is for the sale of alcoholic beverages, beer and wine only, on premises consumption, consumption in conjunction with the operation of a restaurant with outside seating and service on a patio in a master plan unit development district. This comes to you with a recommendation of approval with conditions from the Planning and Development Department and the Planning Commission. 
Is anyone here to speak against this item? Seeing no one, that remains on consent. P11. P11 was published in the Tampa Bay Times January 4th, 2019. E11 is PDD 19-0003. It's a development of regional impact development order amendment, and it's for Wiregrass Ranch DRI, Locust Branch LLC. It's a resolution amending resolutions 07-291, 08 06, 10-376, 10-399, 13-29, 13-99, 13-245, 13-13 and 14-66 for the Wiregrass Ranch DRI number 260. And we're requesting that you approve the resolution amending um, these, uh, um, these resolution, former resolution numbers or prior resolution numbers. Okay. Is there anyone here to speak against this item? Seeing no one, it remains on consent. Move to approve a brain consent. Second. Well, I got one more consent. I got one more. I got one more. Excuse me. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yep. P12. P12. Published in the Tampa Bay Times okay. December 2nd, 2018. P12 is PDD 19-0449. It's a large-scale comprehensive plan amendment, CPAL 19-03, Highway Vision Plan Update to Modify and Change the Title of the Highway Vision Map, 7-36 to Highway Vision Plan and Functional Class Map, Eliminate Existing fun Functional Class Map 7-1, the 1999 Roadway fun Functional Classification Map 7-1A, Functional Roadway Functional Classifications 7-24, and Add Text Amendments. And this comes to you with a uh, recommendation to authorize transmittal to the Department of Economic Opportunity and other reviewing agencies of the proposed large scale, co scale comprehensive plan amendment. Is anyone here to speak against this item? Seeing no one, what's the pleasure of the board? Move to approve the consent agenda. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. All opposed? All passed. Wells. Uh, Wells. Um, so that completes everything on our list. Still have some miscellaneous business. I think you still okay. have. Okay. Um, yeah, you're done with your agenda. Yeah. Done with the agenda. You have something else to add or? No, I'm good. Uh, Commissioner Mariano. Thank you. I hadn't, I hadn't done mine. I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll let this clear up for a second. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I think with uh, 12 agenda items all in consent, I think we set a new record. <laughs> <laughs> pretty impressive. It goes pretty quick when yes. they're like that. <laughs> so. All right. Um, at the last board meeting, I had uh, brought forward a resolution uh, for hemp. Um, board discussed it. I think everyone has gone through and done their research. I hope everybody's comfortable with it. Um, I reaffirmed by legislators as well, and they seem to be comfortable with it. So I'd like to, I guess, do I move for an emergency to bring it forward? or just kind of reconsider because we had already heard it before. Yeah, you heard it last time. We continued it last time, continued. I think. It last time. It was the resolution. What we... In an abundance of caution, move for the emergency, but but my recollection was it was supposed to come back to this okay. this agenda. Right. But uh, That's what I thought, but out of abundance of caution, I'll move for emergency. Second. You got a motion, second, for emergency. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 So the, 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 go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the resolution passed uh, that we pr had presented last meeting, I, I do want to go forward with it. Um, we have further discussion or quick question. Any more discussion? Question? You, you mentioned you had a conversation with some of our legislators. Did yes. Oh, okay. Just just to reaffirm that they were 100% on board. Okay, I see, see no issues with our I see no issues at all. There's a lot, there's a lot of things moving, but uh, again, we can be a market leader. Uh, they've got for support internationally as well as locally, uh, so I'll move approval. Okay, second. Okay, I got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All opposed? Aye. All, right. All right. Motion passed. And I thank you very much. Um, at the end of 
the, at the break today, you know, Commissioner Wells made a, a great motion with the United Way as far as like funding the, uh, it looks like, sound like furloughed people. I don't know if it included active duty in case they're uh, having trouble with utility bills. Was it, did it include active as well as furloughed? Like, like Coast Guard members or service anyone members? Anyone that's affected by the shutdown, correct? The utility fees, yes. Anyone affected by the shutdown. I know, but he's talking about the United Way. Um, that was specific to some organizations. To the not-for-profits that, not that, that were, had lost federal funding. Correct. Okay. So, so and, and that, as that was all being done, so any, anyone who's going to be covered, whether active duty or not. Um, and someone had an idea. I got two ideas, actually, that they brought up to me. Do we think we want to take and maybe put some extra money away? And for those that are going to struggle, and hopefully this gets done within 30 days, if someone's even had trouble with maybe with a mortgage payment, that we might want to put a chunk of money away to help them through this next payment coming up. I don't know if anyone's I thought about that idea or take a couple of weeks to think about it, but it might be yeah. those that are going to be in that trouble, and we know they're going to get paid. Through. I know that, that there are a significant number of banks that are working with the furloughed federal employees to defer their mortgage payments until they get paid. Okay. I don't know if that includes 100% of them, but I do know that there are a significant number of banks that are reaching out to those because they know who their mortgagees are, are reaching out to them with respect to delaying interest payment or the late payments and everything on that mortgage payment until this is resolved. Okay. So I, yeah, I, I think the, the private industry has that and they're handling that. Okay. Yeah, at least I've seen a lot of traffic on that. Okay. Yeah. If we get a lot of feedback by the next meeting, we we'll bring up again, but now that it's floated out there, we'll see what happens. So anyway, through that discussion um, I had with some gentlemen, the IHOP um, restaurants of Trinity and Spring Hill would actually like to do a free breakfast um, for any of these people that are affected, any of the federal employees. Uh, the idea was brought up is the hurricane shelter. If we could fit it up there, they could bring the food there. Uh, and just give them all a free breakfast, let them just to hang out. Um, could be a Saturday, I think it might be good. If, the, we, you, if we're willing to give them the building, they're willing to bring the food and feed all the people. That sounds like something we want to do. I think if you can get us the contact information, we'll okay. see if we can make something happen. All right, well, I'll pass that forward. Okay. Um, the Gulf Consortium had a meeting um, for the executive committee, we're going to be discussing some items coming up on the uh, next meeting, which will be January 31st. Um, those of you remember the oil spill, we had uh, BP had sent this county, I think it was like $6 million for the money revenue lost. The state had done a fund uh, called Triumph. And of that, back in 2016, they allocated $400 million that went into the county budget, uh, not the, to the state budget. And they gave uh, $300 million to the eight disproportionately affected counties. Mm -hmm. And the other $100 million kind of went to general fund and stayed there. There's a new allocation that's coming up uh, that's going to go back to those same eight, which is 75% of that money based upon payments going through. The other 25 hasn't been allocated anywhere. There is one bill that's up in legislation right now where a county is going to try to get some rural development money to move some money forward. Um, at the past couple of years since this has gone out and we kind of like had it in the budget from previous years, we couldn't have a clear answer what happened. We had a lot of people interested in trying to get that money to the other 15 counties. I think we should look at one of the counties that's being actually putting a, a referendum, uh, a bill forward, is to try to get part of that other 25 percent money. and they weren't even in the consortium. I think we should look to push forward, and I don't expect to answer today, but I'll give you some information you can look at it because we still got time uh, as we go forward, and even when we're up at FAC, we could even talk about it, is to actually look at that other 25% and try to get at least half of that money to the other 15 counties equally divided to any projects that might co you know, go along with the consortium or something where they can actually package that money in and make the other money an up to number uh, for the other counties in the state. It's kind of, I think it's probably the fairest way to, to break it up, being that one county's already stimulated forward. I'm actually glad they're trying to go after that money for the right reasons. So uh, if the board's comfortable, I'll give you the chart, I'll give you the agenda item, and you can kind of you know, just gear up for the FAC conference coming up. And if you want to put information out there, you can do that. 
Sound like something to take a look at? Absolutely. If there's money available, we can get it, yeah. It's, it's definitely coming in. And like I said, we missed the first load, but not that we didn't try to get it. Um, this next one would be uh, $80 million um, coming up. So 70, 26 million is still open to go anywhere. So that money could be divided between you know, the rest of the state in some way, some fashion. All right. Um, I got great news for the uh, Sun Coast Recovery Center. Uh, we had a meeting with Nye Florida. I will tell you, I wasn't happy with the actual money that they're going to end up being paid for their impact fees, which we're not charging them, just be hooking up from a septic system to that. But it's enough to make the deal go forward where he thinks he can get financing get together. So we'll see some uh, plans coming up. As soon as we get date of a uh, grand opening, we'll let you know. But they're going to take care of the people. I don't know if you remember Dr. Ruiz and Tom Saxon that came forward before the board. They wanted to take care of our, our veterans with PTSD, other mental health issues, opioid addiction, and open it up on their own dime. Um, so that'll be coming forward. I had great news in the meeting with uh, Secretary Gwynn about the uh, palm trees up and down 19. Uh, they were kind of like held up north of Hudson Avenue because of the speed limit that's there. But we actually did find a palm tree that works. And now that whole project's moving forward. All they're going to do is take out the palm tree classifications that were in there before, because some were the, the big, tall palm trees. They're going to go to this other palm tree type. And with that, they can just like cut and paste, taking one palm tree out to another one, and get that project moving real fast to get it right in line with everything else we're going on. And I'll say one, one other thing. The, um, uh, I actually, I, I meant to mention this earlier, but uh, Mr. Steinschneider showed me something real interesting about hemp. Uh, all the things I've heard of, and I'm a little disappointed with my hemp supporters back there in the cooperative, but he actually showed me a picture when he was in California. They actually have a, uh, maybe if you try like cashew milk or almond milk, they actually have a hemp milk that's out there. So we can make, maybe uh, keep that in mind as far as another byproduct. Uh, last item is the uh, CARES has got that uh, beach charity event, and Commissioner Moore, Commissioner Wells, thank you for jumping up to sponsor it. Um, I'm going to be end up sponsoring it as well. And we've got the Tampa Bay water ski team will be coming. Uh, we've got a fireworks show that will be coming. And it should be a real good thing uh, for CARES to, to help them raise money. And one of the things that I thought about with their uh, animal service, and I actually mentioned to Commissioner Cox, you know, SunWest is a great place for concert venues. And we used to have the Battle of the Bands, right? Continually year after year. We tried to actually do it up at the Harbortown part of the park a couple years ago, never played out. But I think it's something we should actually do a maybe a weekend, do it with library services, do it with animal service, so pick one day to the other day, and raise money to help both of these friends as, as we come forward. So I'm happy to try to lead the way with that as we go forward. And that's all I have, sir. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, you mentioned the other bathroom being built in the parking lot, and I've been meaning to ask you this for a while. The money that was donated by the whoever, our mysterious benefactor, mm -hmm. yeah. do do we know how much is left and where that went to? The money is out. Uh, we don't know exactly where it went to, but the uh, the bathroom funds, the piping, the lime rock, uh, sidewalk and wall were all part of the part of the funds used. From from the five hundred one c three. Yes. So but is there any money left to do any paving or? There is no money left. Okay, thanks for that. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Steinsteiner, do you have something for the board? I do. Um, I, If I could get you to move an emergency, I have a walk-on item. So moved. Second. We got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, in your red in your red folders, there is a, a memorandum. Um, it appears that two letters of credit that were received uh, and signed for by Pasco County have been misplaced. Um, in order to get them reissued by SunTrust Bank, uh, they have an indemnity agreement, um, which I have gone over. Basically, it says that if the, if the letters surfaced and were tried to be cashed, we'd be responsible for, for defense. Um, but in essence, we, we have received verification that we received them and, and they've been misplaced. So I would ask that the board authorize the chairman to execute the indemnity agreement with SunTrust Bank 
and direct board records to distribute as outlined in the memorandum. So moved. Second. I got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed, like sign. Motion passed. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Okay. Yes. I forgot to mention, but I still have members of the cooperative here. Would you mind if we took a picture? Oh, we can. Is, is that everything you had? Yes, that's it. Thank you. At this point, wait we till we're adjourned. We'll be done. Okay, that's fine. Uh, hmm? Nikki, I was saying wait till we're adjourned and then we can go down and get a picture. Okay, we can do that, Dan. My opinion, but whatever four of us. That's fine. I'm good with that. Anything else? Nikki, do you have something? Okay. Um, three community events that our office is putting on that I wanted to uh, make note of. We have the Big Shred event, and it's opened up to the citizens of Pasco County. If you have personal items that you would like to shred, meaning personal documents that you would like to shred. Um, this Saturday here in Newport Ritchie in this government complex at the West Pasco Judicial Center, um, we will be providing the shredding trucks there. And then on February 2nd in Dade City at the courthouse over there at the Robert Subner Judicial Center, we are allowing up to three boxes per car or three kitchen size bags of recycling um, to be shredded. We wanted to um, say thank you to Pasco Recycling and Covanta for helping us in this event, so thank you. And also, um, we have a Valentine's Day wedding that's coming up in Dade City at 2 p.m. on Valentine's Day. And we have that um, right at the historic courthouse around the, um, the fountain. Thank you for using that word. <laughs> and um, it's a great event. We offer photos of the couples, and they get to do, um, we have cupcakes. It's a great celebration. Um, it's beautiful. We have balloons. Very we usually have someone coming and play music. It's just really a nice, it's a really nice event. And the last date to get your license is February 11th. Is that right, Debbie? February 11th. Okay, great. Um, and the last thing I want to say is we're having a passport day. So we're opening the office on um, Saturday, March 16th in both Newport Ritchie and Dade City in the government centers. So a lot of times when parents are planning the summer vacation, they take off work during spring break week because the kids are out of school. So now, if you want, you can plan to come to our office either in Newport Richie or Dade City on March 16th and get your passports for you and your family. So it's on the Saturday. Okay. And that's it. That's it. Yes, thank you. All right. Is that everything? Mr. Biles, anything else? Yes, sir. Okay. Hearing nothing else, we stand adjourned. <laughs>